Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Source of the Force. This week we're back again after a two-week hiatus. Um, back for your listening pleasure with another great guest. Um, this week we've got Brian Aston, a uh, former champion martial artist, represented representative even of the ECKA, Martial Arts Association. Top boy martial artist and a general top guy, man. A guy I've known of a long time, man. I've got a lot of time for. He's an amazing bloke, man. Do you know what I mean? And I love the guy. Hope you will too. Um, we reminisce, we geek out on films and music and talk martial arts and his whole journey thing. You know what I mean? You know how we do. You know how we do. Again, if you like the kind of things that I'm putting out there, the, the interviews, the music and all that kind of stuff that we're doing, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, put a comment in there. Um, if you're listening via Spotify or Anchor, uh, leave a voicemail for me. It'd be good to hear your dulcet tones and, you know what I mean, see where your head's at, man. If you've got any suggestions for people I should be interviewing, if we're going to talk about amazing people doing amazing things. So, with no further ado, let me introduce to you, Brian Aston. See you in a bit. Right then, source of the force. And once again, I've got another great guest. And a great, great bloke and great friend of mine and top boy martial artist, top tier martial <laughs> artist. I have Brian Boz Aston, former world title holder, former certified bad man, man, and a guy that I love to bits, mate. Do you know what I mean? Boz, how are you doing, <clears throat> sir? You're up, yeah, mate. man. Yeah, man. Good. It's really good to see you. I haven't seen you in ages, man. I know. I know. I think the last time I saw you was not New Year's Eve, just gone. The New Year's Eve before, then yes. Marcus. That's yeah. right, that's right. Yeah. All the kids around and they're all doing the, uh, what is it, dance-off thing on YouTube and stuff. <laughs> yeah, just, there's there's a lot of kids all just dancing around in the little room. Yeah, man. I, I, I stayed away from that. I'll just stay yeah. by the drinks. I'll just yeah. stay by the drinks. We're all bro. drinking and eating Marcus Curry Goat, not we? That was it, man. Standard. You know what I mean? Happy New Year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah, nah, it's good. Yo, much respect for passing through, man. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah, just no spending some time to, to connect, mate. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Thanks so, for me on, mate. Goes without saying, man. If I'm if I'm talking about if I'm talking about interviewing top people from Wolves, and especially if I'm talking about martial arts, man, I've got to talk to my boy here. Yeah. Man. Do you know what I mean? Most yeah, definitely. Man. Most definitely, man. Most definitely. <laughs> so. Can I say, right, okay, let, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not even sure if I can do it justice, mate. You tell me, obviously, um, Brian here was has been martial artist for, I don't even know how many years. We, yeah. I, I don't even know how we met, you know, I don't even know. We used to train, we used to train with Brian at a place yeah. called Sidekicks in Wolverhampton, right, yeah. where he used to take the yeah. class and just torture us, man. Me and my missus used to go down there and I brought loads <laughs> of people through there at one point in time. And Brian, this is just, just torturous, mate. Do you know what I mean? We used to love it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, how long sort of oh, before that, that was, were, you, were you training? I started actually training in martial arts in ni 1988, I think. Mm. Um, but um, literally, you know the Queen Victoria Hotel? Yeah. In Wolverhampton. It's, I think it's Chang's name, isn't it? Next door to the Grand Theatre in Wolves. Um, it was in it's one of the Britannia, ballrooms. Is it Britannia? That's it, the Britannia Brit Hotel. That's right, yeah. yeah. He used to be called the Queen Victoria Hotel back then. And he used to have to walk up into town. Um, my mum used to walk me up and started training there. Um, but it all started like, years previous to that. Um, like just watching martial arts films and stuff as a little kid and um, practicing with my mates. But I couldn't find anywhere that w was replicating what I'd seen on film. Mm. Um, so I was walking in all the karate lessons, doing the catering lines and stuff like that. Seen that one at all. Um, do you know what I mean? Watching Bruce Lee films and stuff. I don't know what Bruce Lee does. So then I walked into this club in Wolverhampton. It was at an old um, Echo Club run by Malcolm Swan. And uh, walked in there and they were sparring. I was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, so I joined up right there and then, really. Um, I, I think I remember crying because I wanted my suit. Um, you know, <laughs> joining, getting my gear and everything to join in, um, kicking off. Screaming in a proper little kiddie tantrum, like I was only seven or eight. I thought um, he's been got 17. You know I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it now because you can't do any training nowhere, there's no backs yeah. to do a smack or anything, so yeah, it's a bit annoying, but yeah, I'll play some kiddie tantrums soon if you don't get this lockdown lifted. Yeah, I hear you 100% here. I'm sure a lot yeah. of people will be hearing exactly the same thing, mate. <laughs> so 
as you're probably aware, the format of this show, right? We like yeah. to get wicked people on yeah. and talk about their sources of inspiration yeah. when they were growing up. That were movies, music, people, places, events, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'd love to hear what inspired you to go into martial arts and, you know what I mean, just be a, a cool yeah. geezer, man. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, let's, sorry, on. my friend. Now, go on, I'll man. Tell you, what my first inspiration, obviously, like, it's going to be like British Lee films, Enter the Dragon. Was yeah, the yeah. first one I saw. Um, it's all, like, pretty much always been my favourite film. The amount of times I've watched, sat and watched that film. I think, like, on the old VHS, we recorded it off the TV or something. And um, <laughs> watched it that much, the, the tape snapped and wore out. Do you know what I mean? It was like watching... Um, literally every Saturday, Sunday morning, I sat in front of the television, legs crossed, watching it. And even now, put it on now, and I know word for word, watch it that many times. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's one of those films that, like, if you you're flicking through the, you're flicking through like the the the, the pages on like yeah. your, your Virgin TV, and you go into yeah. Dragons on wherever yeah. it, where it starts. Could have started an hour, two hours ago. I'll catch the last fifteen you minutes, no on, problem. Yeah. yeah, you just put it on, man. You know, it's one of those films, man. Classic business, classic business. <laughs> So, where where did you grow up then, bro? Where, talk, talk about. I grew up like, um, in, in, in an area. Well, it was a, the area was called Rough Hills, um, which is like a small little estate in the Parkfields area of Wolverhampton. Right. Um, a bit rough, county estate. You know what I mean? Um, don't have a, a lot growing up, but it was literally just off the red light area in Wolverhampton. Nice. So, do you know where Steel Edge Lane is? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry. Allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> you drove through there. Yeah, so someone time. told me that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was literally the state just off there, like just past All Saints. Mm. Um, you know, the same as yourself, growing up in Marines, rough areas, council estates, mm. um, kids ain't got nothing to do, um, gangs of kids out on the bikes, gangs of football. With twenty aside on the big field and stuff, and, you know <laughs> yeah. the, the person no do, time do, limit all yeah, day. Yeah, no time right. limit all day. As soon as the street lights come on, you get on. Um, you know, no rules, no rules football. And the person who owned the ball was in charge. It was their rules. You know what I mean? That's it there. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was good though. Like, you know, the local council workers would come round in a van and like get you off the streets. So. Let's take us on day trips, take to the seaside and stuff like that. So it was mad. No, it was mad. Was... <clears throat> yeah. So, who, so did, did you have like a, a group of friends that you used to like, like you grew up with that you used to yeah, move and get yeah, into mischief yeah. with? You know what I mean? Who, who did you move around with? Just a group of little, like all my mates, like um, out on our bikes all day. But like as we grew up, we've like sort of like drifted apart and lost contact with most of them. To be yeah. fair, um, it was only when it was about like I don't know, ten or eleven. That started making like some of the friends from um, senior school really, and then the ones I've kept in contact with over the years now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at home, yeah, are there any kind of um, musical influences or film influences? Obviously, you've said about Bruce Lee and Enter yeah. the Dragon. I think yeah. probably, literally, probably every person I've interviewed has said Enter the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, that era, wasn't it? Uh, it the early, like late seventies, early early eighties. Um, yeah, such people a big one. That sort of age, like forties. If if they're a martial artist in the like that sort of age bracket, it's got to be their inspiration, wasn't he? Mm. Um, you know, there's nothing to say really about him. Is that you can anything you read about him, and you're just fascinated. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. So any film that you're watching, you just. You watch it now, you don't care how bad the graphics are, how bad the, the you know, the special effects and stuff are, how bad the dubbing is or dealing with subtitles and stuff. You don't care, you'll still watch them. hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. So what about music at home? What what sort of things were were there any sort of music was it a musical household or Yeah, not, not really. really to be honest. I was I was always out. Um it was I was one of them kids where he's like get up in the morning, get out of the house and he's out playing all day. Yeah, yeah. I was one of those. Um, it was only really when I started, like, you know, like again, senior school, um, got to about 12, 13, 14, um, and like the, like the sort of like the, as far as the house music and stuff, and all the all that sort of era of music started kicking in, really. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started listening to music a bit more. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, then. So, if, we, if we're talking about 
early days, early yeah. years at home, and we're talking yeah. about things on TV. What do you think about this bad boy here? <laughs> so things on t on TV, Saturday afternoon, you know, the sort yeah. of programmes, we yeah. Night Rider, can you see, A-Team. Can, yeah, A-Team right there on yeah. the screen. Can you see that? Brian, tell me about this this series, this TV series. How, how big a deal was this oh, was in massive, your childhood? Massive, massive deal when we were kids. Like, you know, I even had the figures, had the toys. <laughs> <laughs> had, the, had the BA van and was sliding door at the side with the figures and everything. Had the lot. <laughs> um, but that, it was just, it's one of the programs that all, all the lads enjoyed when they were a kid. Any lad who didn't enjoy this program. They're lying, really, of course. They did. You know, all the <laughs> all the guns going off, explosions. Nobody got hurt. Nobody the got hurt. Was, they just got to no, like, dust no. themselves off. Like... <laughs> the car crashes, you know, tipping upside down. People just get out, shaking the dust off. The A throwing people through the air. The you know, men, 18, 19 stones, you're throwing them through the air. But I think <laughs> it's what kids want to see, isn't it? The, the yes, imagination yeah. when they're a kid. That's it, man. A team yeah. is a big deal, man. Big, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> I love the A team. It was when you watch it back now. It's like literally like someone could go off a cliff in a car, yeah. hit sort hit a rock, explode, roll down, and then you see the blocks will come out. Go, <coughs> <laughs> just like nobody died. You know what I mean? No one. The machine yeah. guns going off. No one got shot. You know what I mean? on, yeah, on Comedy Central, right? The, yeah, uh, they've started playing it now. Eleven o'clock of a night time every night. Put the A team on and buy oh, watch. Yeah, he's on. That's... You put it as nothing. It's never nothing else on TV. Mm. So you put that on. You just sat there and you put remembering back to when you was a kid on a Saturday afternoon watching them. God, you can't be A A team, man. Be A Barakas. Nah. Drinking no <laughs> milk. You know I ain't got no plane. I ain't got no plane fool. You know what I mean? You heard up. <laughs> heavy, heavy, heavy. Great series. Great series. It was, Another it was. series that you've highlighted. Go on. Put that bad boy on. Yes. <laughs> talk to me about this man. I wasn't about this life but I know what you're saying what, talk, to me, talk to me about this when you look back at it now it's extremely camp isn't it? It, it, mate man's got Uggs on you know Uggs yeah. and some men running around skin. with furry pants and Uggs on muscled <laughs> up swinging swords round one, one guy one guy got a hoodie on with a skeleton face mm. you know what I mean it's, it's wrong but back then I don't know why I just I just loved it. I, I, no, I think what it was is when I was a kid, I wanted to be, I don't know, like watching like films like, like Bruce Lee films and stuff like that. I wanted to have, it was, I think it's like the muscles thing, mm. I think. So <laughs> I'm making myself like a like, camp little kid here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not here to judge, bro. I'm not here to judge. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I think it was just like the, the, again, just like the action and the fighting and stuff. That's what I liked, I think. Yeah. yeah. But it was the, the guys with the muscles and stuff. That's, you know, that was like what I wanted to train to be like, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. So, were, were you ever like bullied as a kid or anything like that? And you thought, right, okay, I want to learn how to defend myself or sort of yeah, people bullied? I, 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 was, I, weren't, I weren't bullied, right? But I was like, I was a little quiet kid at school. Mm. Um, a lot of people would like say, like you're a liar because you're not like that now. Um, yeah, but when, <laughs> but when, when I was at school, I was the, 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 the shy, quiet little kid. Yeah. And, you know, from as far as from the age of about five and six, that's when I started watching the Bruce Lee films and, you know, this is what I want to do and this, that, the other. It was only when I started doing, like, the training and stuff with Eka that my confidence started to grow. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, like, and doing the sparring and the training and thinking, oh, you know, I couldn't do one press up and all of a sudden I'm down doing like 15, 20, 25 press ups and stuff. And your confidence grows. Yeah. So, like, I was still this quite, you know, quite shy kid. Um, a couple of people, like, you know, I weren't, like I said, I weren't a bully. I wasn't, I wasn't bullied at all, really, at school. But so I was quiet and shy. I got picked on, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was only when I got like I got to me like the purple belt, blue belt, and stuff like that. I started getting real confident. I thought I'm starting to this now. I'll start fighting back yeah. because I'd, I'd moved. I'm trying to think now. When I was going for my orange and green belt, there were only like a, a limited number going for the green belt. 
So they said, well, do you want a double grade? I was like, yeah, I'll double grade, but the people you'd be having to do the sparring group, they're like in the old group. Like in what does double, the, the, double grade mean? What does that so mean? So like doing, <clears throat> so you do like two belts in one, one grading, basically. Right, right, right. So I did my grading, stayed on and did the second grading, but they were all like the, the older class. Mm. Um, stayed on and did that with them. And I was had to join them with the sparring and stuff like that. So I was sparring with the older kids and I was thinking, Oh, I can do this. I started like, sticking up for myself a little bit. Mm. So I did. And that's when my company started to grow, really, from at the age of like nine, ten upwards. Nice. Um, so, we, so when I went to, go to senior school, again, that was again, you, you're, the, you're the little skinny kid. Um, do you know what I mean? So that went to senior school, probably had the same yourself, that everybody's got to try and, you know, set the scene and make a status, um, you know, and put themselves like, on the on the scene really and say, like, you know, this is me, I am this is I am. I'm gonna push the little kids around so nobody picks on me. Mm. Um and that's what happened really. So, you know, got into a couple of scrapes and stuff at senior school. Nothing major again I weren't bullied as such, but because I was a little skinny kid, um just got picked on every now and again. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So w- when you start to watch these programmes where like you look at the A team and it's always like yeah. The A team coming to rescue somebody like the underdog to kind of, yeah, with some harebrained scheme to make things work, or like a He Man, you know what I mean? There and Wiley Kitts. Was, was it White? Was it, was it no? Nah, what, what was the name that, of the, the uh, lion thing, the tiger thing? That was, uh, Thundercats. Oh, yeah, Wiley, that's what, I'm getting my, I'm getting my cartoons <laughs> mixed up, bro. Shame on me, shame on me. So, what, what was the battle cat? Battle cat, battle, yeah, battle cat, yeah, I was, yeah. I was yeah, yeah. About, I was all about from the cats, man. <laughs> that was my jam. That was my jam. You know what I mean? I'll fight anyone in the back. It starts to diss from the cats. That's it. I'm start swinging. <laughs> <laughs> Heavyweight stuff. That is me. Heavyweight. Stuff. <laughs> but yeah, but it's kind of like um, that transformation thing with He Man. When it, do you know what I mean? Where yeah. like he power of grey skull business and he turns into like a bad man. Yeah. Or you know what I mean? His cat turns from like a little soft, soft kitty to like the battle cat ready for war you know yeah. what i mean it's for a kid watching that it is it's a big thing in it really it is, you know what I mean? it when is, you stop and think about it, it as an adult now looking at those things yeah like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? that's, that's, what, you that's what you want to make you uh, although it's only a cartoon you do aspire to things like that yeah you know i mean even though like, you say it's a cartoon but you want to be, become this bigger person because you want that little you know little weedy kid so you want to develop yourself and become something better than what you are i suppose yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Hey, He Man is inspirational. It, it is. You, it is. You heard it <laughs> when you break time. it down, when you break it down, it's inspirational. When you it's... first look at it, it's camp as hell. <laughs> yeah, man. Man's got Uggs on. Yeah. However, do you know what I mean? It's inspirational. It's inspirational to kids. <laughs> <laughs> big up He Man. Yeah, He Man was big though. He Man was amazing. Do you know what I mean? He Man. He Man yeah. was a great, great. And then the Middle Eastern film with it, and he completely ruined it. Oh, did he? I, I didn't even watch that, man. I wasn't nah. like that. I was like, mm. there's certain things you should just leave alone. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Unless you leave go the man as a all cartoon. in. Yeah. Don't, don't put Dolph Lundgren in a pair of hooks and ruin it. You <laughs> <laughs> You're not about that life, no. Nah. Keep, keep, keep um, Dolph Lundgren as Ivan Drago. Drago, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> an- an- another series. Yep. Close to your heart. This bad boy. Yes, yeah. Talk to me about this, man. Oh, you know I mean? it was again. Because I've forgotten watched. about this one. I'd forgotten. Yeah, about this. This, Mate, this. There's loads. There's loads of these Saturday afternoon programs that I keep mentioning that everybody forgets about. Mm. Street Talk's one of them. The only reason I liked it was it was the motorbike. I've got a you know I'm a big fan of motorbikes. Always have been since a little yeah. kid. Um, again, I don't know why. I, I think it's whether the the exhilaration of them going fast on them or what. Yeah. I'm not too sure. I've, I've always liked the motorbikes, and this is one of the first series as I saw with the motorbikes in, so I, I loved it. Yeah. In reality, was that bike actually any good? Because it was weird looking. No, it was it was a really really crap bike. <laughs> no, <'cause it> looks, <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but it looks pretty shit. <laughs> it, it, is, it is. It is. It is. I think. It just, I think the actual bike itself. I think it was like a, a motocross thing. You no, know, they just yeah. took some plastic on and some flashing lights, and all of a sudden it's straight off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's like up, really upright as well. It is like, yeah, 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. The slide went again when you're a kid. It looks amazing. Yeah, it's going fast enough, isn't it? No. <laughs> wicked, wicked, wicked. So, yeah, watching all these kind of, these, because I remember all these programs, like you had like uh, Street Hawk, you had yep. Manimal. Remember Manimal? Yes. Yeah, you know, that's one of the ones that nobody ever remembers with the bubble in hand. His hand yes. is a bubble, but then he turned into like an eagle or a wolf or something. <laughs> Some <laughs> random shit. Like, what? <laughs> See what I mean? Auto Man. You know what yes. I mean? That was another one. <clears throat> Auto mean? Man. Here's one that, that do, you, do you ever remember? Nobody ever remembers this one. It's called Highway Man. I remember the name, but I can't remember the program. Yeah. And he, he had like, he was like a truck. And <laughs> the back of this truck had a helicopter in it. What, the bloke was a truck? <laughs> no, the, <laughs> the highway man, he drove up the truck. Oh, so right. I said, the, 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 like like truck a, the truck was like a pointed sports truck. And then right. this trailer inside it had an helicopter, so the, fold, the sides folded down. And his helicopter like all folded out of it, and he took off and flew around in that. Nice. Yeah, but not many people ba- remember that one. Was that based in Bilston? It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> On the lunt. <laughs> it was called Highway Mon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, so around these sort of times, you were like, I don't know, what, what, like sort of 10. Nine, eight, yeah, about ten, yeah, that sort eight, of nine, ten ish, yeah, 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 yeah. Those are these are amazing TV programs, man. I love yeah. them. Do you know what I mean? Big stuff. Exactly. Saturday afternoon, that, that's what he did. He just watched all these programs, and then by watch kicked in, didn't it? When I was, that was a little bit older though. That was about yeah. you know like teenage years then. Hormone watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But he watches a whole different kettle of mackerel, friend. You know what I mean? <laughs> Serious. So uh, around that sort of time, the TV, we, we, we look at the TV and our, the, yeah. your, your choice, your selection for TV, big. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's a lot of things that people probably won't remember or won't, yeah. won't, won't have thought about and go, oh, yeah, I remember that. Do you know what That's I mean? Right. Street Hawk, yeah. Airwolf, Blue Thunder. Airwolf, Wolf, another one. Do you know what I mean? All those yeah. ones, man. All the, the same tracks to these. Like shows as well were awesome. Do you know what I mean? Another one, um, Miami Voice. Yes. yes. Well, wow, what is what a show? Miami Voice, the soundtrack was brilliant to that. Yeah, yeah. Miami Voice was deep. <laughs> Miami Voice was deep. Yeah, and then, then with the Miami Voice series, we went and made a film about it, and again, completely ruined it. I know. I know, I know. There's some things you just leave alone, man. All go yeah. all out on it. Do you know what I mean? Do it properly. <laughs> you know? Well, you can't half ass things like that, a classic. No. You know what I mean? No, no. So if we if we're talking about cinema around that yeah. time, yeah, right. What 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 you got to say about this? <laughs> this, this young this young gentleman. Yeah. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I don't know what it was. I just loved the film. And again, it's one of these films I used to watch alongside Enter the Dragon. So I'd watch E. T. Enter the Dragon. E. T. Enter the Dragon. It's just back to back. I don't know why. I just I don't know what he just he just captured my imagination, I think. Yeah. Like with the yeah. the old alien thing, um, and the spacecraft and stuff like that. And it's like when are you a little kid, like like a it's like a magical film, I suppose. Like with, you know, if you've got like a strong imagination, which I had when I was a kid. Mm. You know, this like captured your imagination, I think. Yeah. I think that's what I like today so much. Did you go to the cinema to see this? No, I don't. Was no, it a I didn't. Mood, m- moody video copy. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of lines going across the screen. Yeah. yeah. I think this is one of the first films I remember people having moody copies of. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because it was that yeah. big. Think, Do you know what I mean? It was, think, it was one of those ones might, that people had pirate videos. I might of. be wrong on this, but I think this came out of the cinema. They got took off the cinema. It released on video, then they re released it on the cinema, I think. Because yeah, it was I that popular. Yeah, um, and yeah. it was that year in between when I saw it on like a movie video, right, right. it's one of the under the counter jobs. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think they like released it for like a twenty year anniversary or something as well. Yeah, they did. They? Yeah, back on the cinema. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, ET for for because this is going to go out on Spotify, so people won't be able to see the visuals. But the right. the, the, the the film ET, um, the S- extraterrestrial. I had to say that. Make sure I pronounce that properly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Get me in trouble. 
Yeah, th- this was a massive film in the 80s. It was. You know what I mean? The BMX is the whole sci-fi thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, is it, he dead? You had to be a boy with an alien in front of you. You ever think about it again? You think back now, what would you want to be a mix of the basket on the country? I don't know. Wouldn't would you? Nah, man. You get booed, man. You get you get terrorised. From my ends, anyway. You've got a basket on your bike, mate. You've got a basket on your chopper or your grifter. You're done. You know what I mean? You are done, mate. You are done. Seriously, nah, it's a wicked film. Wicked film. Wicked film. Right. So what other things can you remember from that that time, that, that sort of um, oh. time mm. period? Do you know what I mean? Because it, it sounds like you watch TV and when that played... Had a fight in the, in the streets, come back, watch TV. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? yeah. Is that it, basically? That was, that was it, pretty much. Like, you, you, like, you know, I, I was like a, a really active kid, running around yeah. all the time. Yeah. Do you know what I, mean? I, I just couldn't... I'm still the same now, to be fair. I can't sit still. Um, you know what I mean? I don't like just sitting. I, I get... I've got that <laughs> restless leg syndrome. Not all of the, I need to be like, I've got to do something. You know, yeah, I can't yeah. sit still. Mm. So when I was a kid, I think I got some form of like hyperactivity or something. So I was rather like, in the drive, playing tennis up the wall, kicking the ball up the drive, the neighbours moaning, out on my bike, got the shout at go, go and play over the field or something, playing football, running around, or oh, out on the rope swings, climbing oh, trees. Yeah man. Yeah. yeah, man. Proper childhood. No, that's yeah. good, man. Never that's in the house. It's the thing that... that, that uh, I was saying this yesterday, um, whether or not you think that, do you know what I mean? Like we used to go out and play. Mm. Um, we'd be out like the whole day in the, in the, in the holidays, you'd be yeah. out from like morning till yeah. night, literally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not come back to have like, anything that you'd just be out. Yeah. And I, I, I wouldn't even go out the front door of the house. You had the back door because we're back on, leading onto like a big playing field. So just, just quick the back fence, yeah, straight man. out. <laughs> That was it. It's like where I lived, it was just like at the end of our, our street was Wolverhampton yeah. Racecourse. It's over the yeah. fence. Boom. Racecourse. Yeah. A massive area of grass. You know what I'm saying? Let's <laughs> go and play football. They're literally all day. You know what I mean? You know, you've been at, if I've been out all day playing football, I'll come back purple, Bridgerton. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's you know, just tan, hard, bare tan lines on the top of my t shirt. You know I mean? But like, Burnt. with drawn in, because you had no. Food or drink. No, no. Just like emaciated, like. <laughs> Dry. Dry and purple. Yeah. In the sun, kicking I had a conversation the other day with my oldest daughter, Layla, mm. and um, she's got a tablet and everything now, like all kids have. She's playing this tablet. She goes, Daddy, what did you do when you was a kid when you had your tablet? It's like, <laughs> when you, you had your tablet? Yeah, we, we didn't have a tablet. She goes, what did you do then? What? Where's Seriously. Where'd you go? What? Anywhere? You're on your bike and you just go. Mm. It's you know, down the canals, make some rope swings, climbing trees. And she was like, did your mum share it at you? And she goes, no. No, she'd share it at me if I stayed in the house. Get out. <laughs> get me out. Get out. Get out in the morning. The morning. Yeah. There's some toast. Get out. Come back later when it was dark. <laughs> it is, it's, it's, it's strange. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I was having this conversation, I was thinking whether or not it was that times have changed or is it that times have changed and things are more dangerous now or that the media make us more, we're more aware of it. The things yeah. are still there. I'm sure the things are still there back then, yeah. but it was kind of like people... That it was probably was... worse back then. It's probably more dangerous to be out then. It probably like, was. You know, it was all, yeah, it was all like, you know, don't talk to strangers on the park. Um do you know what I mean? Or going off with the dog talk to strangers. And, do you know what I mean? So it was all about them. But mm. I think now you made it so popular. Or, you know, made everyone so aware of it that it's just everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, like you say, tablets and game systems and stuff like that made people just want to stay in the house because everything's online. That's it. Um, do you know what, though? The reality is, though, right? If, yeah. if I was 10, 12 years old and I had a PS4, and yeah. I didn't have to go down the corner shop to go and play arcade games or down Cascade. <laughs> I'd be in my yard, man. I'd be, I'd be playing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've got these Stickman Spectrum graphics, mate. And these, you know, yeah, I ain't going anywhere. So you know what I mean? You can't knock that, really. But yeah, I, that's, 100% that's a flash understand. That's the past as well, the uh, Cascade. Cascade, yes. Opposite, yes. opposite Marshall world, isn't it? 
Exactly. Yeah, man. That's a big place. I spent a lot of money in there. Getting, yeah. No, it was wicked. Wicked place. Wicked place. <laughs> so, at what at what point did you start to say, you know what, I want to I want to start looking at martial arts a bit more seriously? What what point? Um, was that? When I think my age now. When I got to about eleven. Um, the club I trained at at the um, Britannia Hotel mm-hmm. shut down. Um, I think the hotel, I think the hotel itself closed down for like a, a massive refurbishment, etc. Um, and so the club closed down, and then obviously I, I lost contact of where the clubs went to. Um, you know, because there was, was at the time there was clubs all over the place, mm-hmm. um, but I just didn't realise where the club was. So it's a bit. About a year and a half, I had what you no know, training, other than just doing bits and pieces at home on my own. <clears throat> um, and, and then when I was at school one day, I went to Parkfield School in Wolverhampton. Um, I just noticed a poster in the reception area <laughs> when I was sat outside the master's office. <laughs> Looking for something uh, to read. Is that- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I just noticed, no, no I, just I recognise that name. I recognise that name. He was Ray Hoffman. And I thought, I know him. And he used to train at Malcolm Swan's gym, but in the in the time period of Malcolm Swan's gym closing down, Ray had opened up his own, like in that transitional period, and he was teaching at the school. Right. So I came back on one of the nights and walked in, he recognised me straight away, and he was he got um, Des Walker teaching with him at the time as well, who used to, again, used to train at Malcolm. Gym. So as I walked in, um, they recognised me. I said, look, I'm going to get back into training. You know, give me, give me time to get back into the fitness side of things and, and start taking the belts, etc. And that's that's where I started back up again. Yeah, yeah. so again, got up to me, me black belt and stuff like that. Um, and it was around about, you know, four at 15 sort of age, I get a couple of years of just literally just training, 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 just practicing the basics again, getting it back into it. So that's it, sounds a year and a half out, and just like doing other stuff like kids do. You just lost contact with it, yeah. so it took me a bit of time to give it get a practice, get it back into it slowly. And I thought, you know what, I'll get back into it properly and I'll start getting with belts and stuff. Mm. Um, and you started getting through black belts. So, so were you like hooked? On like learning straight away, or was it kind of like a slow burner, and then something <clears throat> made yeah, you switch? Like, when I was so obviously when I was a little kid, it was all like the, the Bruce Lee focus and the sparring and the training and stuff. And then when I had that year and a half out, I got like into like kids sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? So I was more going out with my mates, going out with my mates, and I thought you know, I've got to get back in. I need to do something because it was still. It was still in the back of my mind, but I still had this love of martial arts. Mm. So I thought, I'll get back into it. I thought, I don't want to go and throw everything into it all in one go. I'm still only a kid. I was about 11, 12, 13. I thought, you know, mm. I'd be up with mates and stuff like that. When I got to about 14, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back into it properly you now. Um, and again, started taking all the grades and stuff again. Yeah. So what, what, made, what made you think that way? What changed your mind? Or does it just... Not sure what it was. I think, just... I think what it was. I think I was just going along with things at the to- at the time. I was thinking, well, I-, I need to either push myself and get better and put more time into doing this, or I'm going to be angry around my mates. And there's some mates that they, they started drinking and stuff like that. And I think mm. I do that. I don't want to get into that sort of stuff. Um, and like, some of them had started getting into like, you know, quite serious. Not, not serious enough to go to prison or anything, but what getting into trouble, um, you know, starting mixing with the wrong crowds and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, I don't want to go down that route. Mm. Um, so what made, you, is... what made you kind of say, you know what, that's my line, yeah? You guys yeah. have gone past that line, I ain't going past yeah. that shit. I'm going to go I, this I way. Because that's, that's like... a difficult thing to do, you know. That's a yeah, it is. Because, like, you know, the areas that I grew up in, I'm sure you had the same, you know, possible options as well. Was that you know people were smoking drugs? There were kids hanging around, walking around with like bags of glue and you know smelt of glue sniffing and stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't want to get into that sort of. I don't want to get into that stuff. It, it, it scared me, if I was honest. You know, like all the people taking the drugs and drinking and glue sniffing and like, 
uh, again, so I was still quite shy little kid. I'm like, I don't want to get into that. Mm. And, and so I was too scared of my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I was too scared of my dad. So go. look, if my dad caught me doing anything, I was in for a good idea. And I was. And I had, you know, I, every time I did something wrong, it just, you know, you can flip down the ear, kick up the arse. Um, I'm like, I don't want to get into that. But I thought, I've got to do something. So that's when I went, like, more into the martial arts. So I just stood there. And thought, wow. you know what, I've, I've been wasting my time too much now. I want to get my black belt. That was my first sort of goal then. Mm. Yeah. That, that's that's a big thing there that you just said there, man. We, yeah. you, your dad, do you know what I mean? Did, did your dad ever like give you the talk? Say, yo, if please could be, please come bring you back here, mate. I'm gonna brock Clark in front of the police. <laughs> do you know, what are those ones? You know, what are yeah. those kind of talks? Yeah. yeah. Dad, if I went home from school and I've been in a fight or anything like that, yeah. It's a first question was, have you eaten back? If I if I said no. I'd get a good idea from the dad then. Yeah, a beauty bar. Yeah, that's all, I that's all he wanted me was just stand up. For stand myself. up for yourself. Yeah. yeah. So obviously. But I've what about the, the standing up for yourself, and then there's the kind of getting into trouble thing. So how how, yeah. how was his kind of reaction to that? Do you know what I mean? Like you've just said. So, yeah. Sorry. Like if I was getting into, if I was starting to get into trouble and stuff, it, it was just that the way I've been brought up was. There was always that fear for my dad all the time. Mm. I suppose looking back at it, if you, look, if you had that same sort of household now, you'd be an abused child, I suppose. Wouldn't you? No, well, well, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not though, you know, because I, know. I mean, I grew up the same way. Where yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, you got a you got a hiding, but I always got a hiding for a reason because I deserve. Oh yeah, there's always a reason. There's Definitely. always a reason. Always a do you know what I mean? And yeah. exactly the same as you. Yeah. I didn't go, I had a lot of people who went into a lot of naughty things. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I, knew, yeah. I grew up in an area where there was a lot of that going on and I never yeah. went that way, never got in trouble in that, in that regard. Yeah. And it was because I cared that much about what my mum thought. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, because yeah. my mum, my mum, my mum, like where I grew up now, everybody knew everybody. Yeah. So if you messed around and shit on your own doorstep, yeah. get back to your mom before you even got back home to defend it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'd be coming back. My mom's already waiting for me to beat me. You know yeah. what I mean? So you, you can't, you couldn't, you couldn't mess around on our estate. You couldn't right. do it. You couldn't I do it. One, one, one inspirational thing that from me though was, um, <laughs> there was a kid as I used to hang about with people from school. Um, and we went out one Friday night and we got, we managed to get some beers and stuff like that. And we had a couple of drinks and stuff as you do when you're a teenager. And it made me sick. And I'm still the same now. I get drunk. I travel everywhere. I can't take it. <laughs> right? And it took me like 40 odd years to realise this. So, <laughs> went out. I get drunk as such. But it made me sick anyway. So, this was... No, it was on a Sunday night. Because the, tra the training class was on Monday. Anyway, so I didn't go. Because I'd been ill all day. My mate who'd been out with us, he used to train with us in the class as well. He went and grasped me up to Ray. Oh, no. <clears throat> so, when I went to <laughs> training on the Thursday night, he didn't bother King, man. He, he, pulled me, he pulled me to the front of the class. He just, he laid into me, but I could tell by his expression, he was just disappointed. Mm. And that hit me more. Even worse. Even yeah, worse. It was worse. Mm. I was thinking, yeah, 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 man. I've, I've let everybody down here. And yeah, I think that changed my worse. mindset then. I thought, you know what? No, I ain't doing that no more. I mean, I've got to, I can't let people down like that. So then that's when I started like pushing myself in. I thought, no, sod that. I ain't doing that no more. Let's yeah. change tack. You know, yeah, yeah that, that's the one, man. That That is yeah. the tool to have in the arsenal for these yeah. kids because that's yeah. the one that hits home. Like yeah. my mum would like <laughs> slap me up and shout and blah, blah, blah. And, You'd probably end up doing the same thing again, but it's yeah. the, the one time where you go past a certain line, yeah. and she looks at it and she just goes, <laughs> and doesn't say, "That's the worst." It's like someone's just stabbed you in your heart and ripped your heart. That is the worst thing ever, man. That's right. You know what I mean, disappointment with someone that you love, man. It's worst. It's the worst. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, hundred percent. Hear that, mate. Hundred yeah. percent. Nah, yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy, man. So, yeah, that's that's an important influence, man. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Your dad yeah. kept you on the straight and narrow, man, because yeah. he knew shoeing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> 100% know those ones. You know what I mean? <laughs> Serious, man.
I don't care about anybody. I'm going to kick it out, out on the road. But I don't want the beat when I get home. That's a different <laughs> level of beat, man. That's a different Just one. Scrapping with the kids when school and that's it. Done, man. Um, backhand up your mom from shop, and it? it's a different one, man. It's a different yeah. level of beating, man. But, but it's like they've, they've been practicing for the years on how to hit you and get, get you with the, with the wedding ring and the white part of the head. As <laughs> 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 other friends, is, you know, when they start, in fact, I'm not, not going to say this because this is going out live, man, but I'll tell you after we come off this. this, this man. <laughs> too funny, too funny. Yeah, so, okay, so. Around this sort of time, you started to take your, your martial arts and stuff more seriously. Yeah. Right? So yeah. let me show you like a series, a poster. Yeah. <clears throat> Bit of Lee Van Cleef, man, and show. Yes. Yeah. Talk to me about this bad boy. Do you know what, right? All it was, it used to be on late at night, and my mum mentioned it to me. Mm. <clears throat> I went, I want to watch it. Got the injuries in it, martial arts. I want to <laughs> see it. Right, so, <laughs> so I used to have to go to bed, right, wait for my sister to fall asleep, and then I could get up and I could come down, and I could watch this. Um, but you know, I can't really remember it a great deal. Mm. Um, all I knew was it was ninjas, and I was just, you know, it's the martial arts thing. There weren't nothing else on the TV with martial arts in it other than this, really, at the time. And yeah. I, I loved it, it was just great. <clears throat> it weren't a very long series. Mm. It was only a few, and it was late at night as well. So we'd been like about 10 o'clock at night, I think it was. And um, you know, I weren't very old. I can't really remember it, but I'd love to be able to see it again, to be fair. It was, yeah, good, yeah. It was a good program. It's one of those <laughs> ones where they got like, you know, like um, Kung Fu with yeah. Baby Carradine. That's it, you know, yeah. Where they've got like Lee Van Cleef in there. Like, Lee Van Cleef, yeah. you should be in like spaghetti westerns, man. He's yeah. not in no martial arts film. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> But Shou Kazugi was legit. You he know, was. My man's yeah, a legit he was, he was a ninja. proper, genuine ninja. And he did yeah, not man. ninja two for years. Yeah, proper, proper, he proper did, actor. Like, quite a few films as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shou Kazugi's a deep man. Yeah. But they always had to have some old bloke as like, yeah, I'm the lead. You know what I mean? <laughs> How do you hold this sword? I've got the right end of this sword. You know what I mean? It's... <laughs> jog on, mate. Jog on. But yeah, yeah, big stuff, big stuff. So, yeah. So let me play. Let me show you one more. Another quick film. Yes. Yeah, another big influence film wise. These two bad boys. Yeah. Yeah. Blood this Sports like, and Kickboxer. <clears throat> this is a sort of t around the time, like 19, deal. It was the early 90s that these films came out, I think, wasn't it? And, um, I think it was you know, 80s, wasn't it? Wasn't it 80s? Late 80s, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, something like that. 89, 90. Mm. Yeah, come on, come on talking. Yeah, so it's about 89, 90. I was, I was, I think, how old was I then? I was about 14, 14, 15. You know what I mean? So obviously these films sort of, sort of came along um, and it was like, you know, that's what I wanted to do. Like, you know, the Bruce Lee era had sort of like gone really and these sort of martial arts films came around. Van Damme sort of with his kicking ability like, you know, sort of a more flashy martial arts from around at this sort of era. Mm. And he got like the, the physique and everything that all the boys wanted. Um, and he was like an inspiration. You know, that's what he wanted to be. Um, well, they were just good, again, good soundtracks, good films. And yeah, and again, any martial artist our age would, would have looked and watched these and thought, yeah, that, that's one of some of the inspirational things that they've watched. 100%. Yeah. So, what, why is it that you went for? The, the the martial art that you did like when you, when you watched like those yeah. those films was it was it based on like you wanted something that replicated that or or something <clears> that was similar to that no, it was like so when I was a, when I was a little kid I'd seen the Bruce Lee films mm -hmm. and I'd moaned and moaned and moaned at my mum and my dad I said look I want to go I want to do what Bruce Lee does I want to do that and they took me to like a karate club a judo club I went to a taekwondo club and every time I went in, they were like doing like the traditional karate, you know, board stance punches. I'm like, hey, what am I going to do? Mm. Judo club. You literally ran the corner from my house, the judo club was. And all of them like rolling around on the floor doing some throws and stuff. And I'm like, nah, nah, what am I going to do? And they took me to the second club and they were sparring. I thought, that's what I want to do. 
Mm. And that, it was that, that's the, I, I stuck with Echo all the way through. Um, what the way through up to me, like a third down, black belt, really, I wow. stuck with them. Um, but like I say, I had that little bit of a gap um, when I was about 10, um, for about a year and a half, two years maybe, um, where I had to move clubs from my to one's close down, Ray off and pick his up. Um, and just carried on from there, but I stayed with the same club, really, same martial art, because it was, it was the combat side, the sparring side that I wanted to do. Yeah, the um, physical, actual yeah. contact stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. W- when you first started off, was it sort of no contact or just like technique and stuff? Or you know what? at what you know point what? did you start? When, 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 what happened your first spa? Your first <coughs> sort of spa? How did that go? I crying. Really? Yeah, because it was like the likes of, like Ray Hoffman used to train there. Des Walker used to train there. Um, I was in the kids' class at the time, but it was, it was like you know we had boxing gloves, um, shin pads, big you know the boots on your feet, um, but it was like proper like you know proper kickboxing sparring, mm. um, so it was, you know it was like full contact karate that we were doing, so there was no no punches pulled or anything. You you, you know you, you got hit, you got hit properly. <laughs> I remember sparring was like. It was an older girl than me. She was a lot bigger. <clears throat> and she just kicked me, hit me straight in the solar plexus. I mean, oh, I've tried to face down. It was horrible. And I, was, I was only like 24. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 no, I was, I was probably about eight or nine. And, and like she was, she was, oh, God, she hit me. She just hit me, hit me right. But like, you know, no punches before. It was like proper full contact. Sparring we were doing, mm. but as a kid, we had, I got all the big boxing gloves and stuff on. So, but that's what we loved. That's what I, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, do you, do you think like from early doors, sort of combat and fighting yeah. has been a part of you? Is it been a part of your family? Any you, of your other family mm-hmm. martial nobody arts into fighting or even <clears> watch fighting? Nobody else, watch fighting. Nobody else is interested. Really? Um, okay. No, like my mom was just. A housewife, she weren't interested in well, as long as I came home and I was okay, that's all I was interested in. My yeah. mum used to take me to the to the classes like and she'd sit and watch, but there's no no real great interest as such. It was all me. Um my dad weren't bothered, he was just he was a I don't know, you know to describe him really. He was never in the house, he was always out. He would either be out down the pub with his mates or he'd be out like doing like really dodgy work on houses and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, that's it. It, 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 it's, it is funny because it, it's kind of like when you talk about someone going into a, a martial art, whatever, that's one thing. But going yeah. into martial arts where it's like full contact and then making yeah. it, taking it to the level you've taken it to, yeah. Yeah. that's kind of different when there's no one in your family that's done that. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That's, you know what I mean? But literally, like. None of, other than like a couple of friends I made in senior school who did, who joined the class for like a year or two, and, you know, did a couple of belts and then left because they got fed up with it. There's no, none of like my family or friends who really been into it. All the friends I've made through like martial arts and everything have been, you know, have been made through martial arts, have not been in my life before. And, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it's literally been all just me wanting to do it. <clears throat> like yeah. so when I said when I got into fighting, that was the only reason I got into fighting was to see what, what I'd been learning worked. It was, it's like, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I'm talking, I was about it's like the ultimate thing. test, isn't it? It's yeah, the ultimate yeah. test, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like if I get well, if I get my ass handed to me, yeah. shit didn't work, <laughs> or so, so how like, I'm applying it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. It's it's like, the way Ray used to teach his class was well, you don't like your traditional class, so you, you practice your basics, you do a bit of pad work, you do some sparring, and um, it was all like all the you know geared towards like your, your gradings and stuff. Mm. But then after the adult class, he used to have like a fighters class. So we'd have people who were trying you train people for fights in this class. It was only in school. Uh, but because Ray's like reputation he, they used to come and train with him, like you know, for the two hours a week, and do some serious like training, pad work, and sparring mm. and stuff. And I asked one day, I said, "Can I can I join in?" And he went, "Yeah, no problem." I said, "Just want to join in, do the training, and see what it's like. Mm. You know, you know, do some 
what better standard sparring really. And then so I joined him with that. And I was like a couple of the adults stayed over. I was only a kid, I was only like 16 at the time. Um and some of the adults would stay over and they're, they're too old. We want to go into a competition. And well, if you're good, I'll join the competition with you. I was like, okay, mm. so it ended up being a semi-contact competition. And I hated it. I hated the semi-contact Why? point stuff. Why is that? I ain't quick enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't do it. I'm like, if I'm going to punch you, I'm going to punch you. I'm not going to pull the punch, like yeah. tickle your belly. I'm going to eat you and make it land. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought that the style in which it was, it's like it didn't suit me. Mm. And, I, and I was crap at it. Um, you know, because I, I was a black belt at the time as well. I had to fight in the black belt category. And all these guys have been doing it for years. I mean, like, like the likes of like Neil Kelly from Birmingham. Mm. Um, he was a fantastic semi-contact fighter. He was fantastic. He was like a world champion at it and stuff. But like, because I was a black belt, I had to fight in his category. I'm like, mm. I, I can't compete with that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I'm not fast enough. And... I'm not flexible enough. Um, so I just, I just didn't like it. it. Didn't suit what I wanted to do. It didn't yeah. suit me. Um, so I just carried on with the, um, the fighters class with Ray for the time for a bit. And I said, when I was 16, I just asked him. I said, look, can I have a go at fighting? And he said, and you're old enough, you can't do it. Yeah. So how old do I need to be? I said, 18. I'm like, it's two years away. So well, that's a lot. That's a long time. Um, but then when I was 16, I fought meningitis. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, so I had meningitis. I was in hospital for two weeks. And I've had it previously for a week prior going to, before going to hospital. So I lost something about like two, three stones or something. I'm quite ill, to be fair. Luckily, it was the, I think it's the bacterial one that I caught. So mm. it, it wasn't the one that you could catch. Um, which made me quite ill. So I was out for like, you know, three weeks. I missed half my exams at school, um, or to half my GCSEs I missed. Yeah. Um, luckily, I got enough like marks to get me into the college course I wanted to do, so I was all right with that, so I never bothered yeah. with the rest. Um, and then, but when, when I came out from having um, meningitis, I, I was like, you know, I think it was about nine stone. Um, I was, you know, school near my... But then I got it back into training. So it took me a while to build all the strength and stamina mm. and stuff back up. Um, and I was like, look, I want to have a go at fighting now. So when I was 17, I had my first match. Yeah, so I kept on it right that much. I was like, you yeah, know, I want to have a go at fighting, I'll go at fighting. And like, I think I sort of proved myself in the fighters class. I could hold my own. He's like, okay, I'll put you in for a match. So I went straight. There's no amateur stuff, just straight. Straight in in the nightclub. Where was it? In North Oh, it was that. It was that an actual show then. Your first yeah, fight? Was yeah, that a proper show. Yeah, <laughs> first one to the show. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sink or swim. <laughs> Sink or swim. Yeah. Full contact. Yeah, man. Where was that then? <laughs> where, where was your first fight? Where was it? It was in. It was in. It was called Rit, Ritzy's nightclub. It was in Northampton. Ritzy's. Was Seventeen. Okay. Yeah. I remember 17. Ritzy. Yeah, it was a chain, wasn't it? Ritzy's. I remember. Yeah, yeah. It was the one in Wolves. Well, yeah. One in Wolverhampton, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. The old it was Eves. I think Eves so. Yeah, that was yeah. that was the that was the Ritzy. Yeah, yeah. The point. KFC there, there it was. Uh, <laughs> it's a car park where Ritzy was, man. It was a car park it, I was at by the Science Park, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. that that big car park. Yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, so I'll drive to Northampton, get in this ring, block opposite me. He's like, I don't know, thirty. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he's a big old man. Yeah. yeah. His, his kids are coming to watch his kids. The I wouldn't even shave at this point. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't even shave oh. Got no hair on my arse or nothing. I'm like, <laughs> an airy arse bloke across the ring. He's going to kill me. And for the first round, he kicked the shit out of me. Mm-mm. Seriously, kicked the shit out of me. All I did was that. <laughs> I held on. I'm like, what, what? I was thinking, so what the hell am I doing? I'm getting beaten up by many. I'm a child. I've just left school. <clears throat> and then I got back then to the first round. Ray goes, you're going to fight black or what? I'm like, yeah, when I get a chance. <laughs> when, he, when he stops punching me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said, well, you got to get in there. You've got to start hitting him back now. He said, he's burnt himself out. Start hitting him back. So I was like, okay. And it just, it's just a massive shock to the system. It's like, you know, I'm like, 
what, what am I doing here? I'm fighting against a, a fully grown adult. I'm a kid, just left school. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? So I was like, I've got to have a go back. So I start fighting back. Well, you know, we're along with, with the training I've been doing now. So I start fighting back. I land just a couple of body shots. And he just throws up in the ring. He's really he threw up. He throw up. Throw up in the ring. And it, <laughs> 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 no way. Yeah. No threw way. Throw up in the ring. End of the show. For like an hour. Because had to clean all the sick up and everything. Must stop the man's running. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my days. He just hit him, like, a couple of body shots and he just threw up in the ring. And he said to me after, he said, it's because I've done two pints of water and put it on the ring. Like, Is it that for? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a kid, man. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to school tomorrow. <laughs> Made the man yeah. throw up. That's yeah. brutal. Yeah. That's First cold. Match. No First way. Match. So from then, yeah. then what are you thinking? Do you know what I mean? What are you thinking? Oh, I'll do that again. That was all right. <laughs> yeah. You kind of I forget all that. the punches you got. I want yeah. that. That's all right. I'll do it so, again. Please, please. Yeah. And to be fair, I didn't get no marks from it. Yeah. No black eyes or anything like that. Oh. Because your hands are I'll up here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have another go. So I had another go. I won that one. Oh. Okay. I'll have another go then. And it was, it was literally like that. Um, and I kept going, having a go, and I'd win, and I'd win, and I'd win, and I'd win. I got to a bit. In a bit. Somewhere in the region of 18, 19 points. I hadn't lost. Um, and but I still didn't realise that the level I was at, and by this time now, I'd got like some like an English title, British title. I'm like, you know, I'm actually all right here. But I'm not I'm not the type of person who wants to brag or show off or anything, but I've done all right. Mm. Yeah, so I think hang on. I'm all right at this. Yeah, so I was just I, I literally carried on. Um but I don't know, it's like back in them days, it was like, although it, it, it classed as being a professional, it's still not a professional fight. It's not a professional mm. sport. It's weird. Yeah. Like, you literally, it, you, you train and you wouldn't get matched up with anybody until you turned up. It was mm. weird. <clears throat> um, like, you, like the Gala Bats in West Brom, one of the traditional, yeah. like, um, old fashioned, like, fight venues they used to use, but it's such a big old, good. You had good acoustics in there because there was a swimming pool underneath. It was, it was yeah. weird. Um, you literally you turn up, you weigh in, and then they match you up. So like, you you'd turn up like if you like an hour before the show started, you weigh in. Right, here's a list of fighters. Here's some weights. It's going kind of matched up. Right, he's had two fights. He's had three fights. They can fight each other. There's always you within a couple of kilos, and like you'd be sat in it. Like, yeah, so you'd be sat in like the the, the arena, if you like, looking around, yeah, who am I fighting? Who am I fighting? Um, and like, you, you'd see the regular faces there, and you'd, you'd sit with them, and you'd like, hey, what, how heavy are you? And I'm, 70, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm 70 kilos. Oh, you were right. What? I'm 74. <laughs> you're more right. And it, like, you knew you were fighting each other. You'd turn yeah. up one day, and every year, I'm 74. Oh, I'm 75. You want to fight in each other. Yeah. Um, it, it was that. It was that sort of like. So, so was it? Was it like that all the time? As in, like yeah. you didn't know who you fought. You didn't like have. Yeah, for ages. Rah. Yeah, and until you got to like, until you started going for titles, and you knew who you were fighting. But my mm. first title, I hadn't got a clue who I was fighting until I turned up. Because. That is <laughs> mad. That is <laughs> I thought, I thought I thought that the the three fights I've had I thought they were kind of like make makeshift but that's even more <laughs> makeshift. <laughs> like my that's first like... title I didn't I didn't turn up for a title fight. The first fight title fight I turned up for I'd only had I've had five or six fights something like that. Mm. So turns up I can't you know what I think it's Liverpool turns up and then there's like you know you got this. Um, this man, this guy turned up. They'd recognize my, see, what I was down for was that Ray was my coach. That everybody knew who Ray was and the mm. size of him. So I'd come walking in with Ray and they'd go, oh, Ray Hoffman's trained him. And they'd pull out. I think, I think, I think if I had every single fight that I've turned up for, that I'd, have a, I'd have about, I don't know, 80 odd fights. <laughs> Serious. Yeah, Seriously. because I'd turn up and they'd pull out at the last minute. 
So, mm. turns up at Liverpool, and the guy was always fighting, pulled out there and then. He's like, some buying some injury or something. So, there was this other guy there who turned up for a Thai boxing match. Mm. And the same had happened to him. His fighter had like, failed to turn up or something. And they said, well, this guy doing the Thai fight had turned up for a, um, for a, he turned up for a British Thai boxing match. Um, and I, I just turned up like a normal full contact fight. And they went, what about if you two fight each other and we'll put a vacant English title on? I didn't know who this guy was. Do you know what I mean? But apparently he was, he was at the level of going for a British title. Mm. So, yeah, whatever, well, we're here now. We'll have, we'll, have, we'll have the fight, mate. Might as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, might as well. We're here now for losing, losing, going on, whatever. So I fought him and um, caught him with a, a liver shot, dropped him <laughs> in the second round. Um, so I've got the first English title. So no, skip right. the Midland one, and straight on to English. <laughs> So, yes, that was my first title fight. Wicked. So how yeah. many fights did you say that was in? Five fights? About five, uh, about five or six fights, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's mad, man. That's mad. Yeah, that's so mad. because it weren't planned, really. You just turned up. <laughs> and I'd say it was all the time. You just turn up, bang in, like, match up. It's got all the that time. That's crazy. Like, and that's why that's... it's like, I've not really got a great memory on who I fought. Because... There was no planning, but you fighting him. Okay, what's his name? Oh, Steve. All right, then. Fighting Steve. <laughs> I don't know who he is. <laughs> he's a bloke opposite you. Okay, he's about the same height as me. But that's how it's about. And that's literally what will happen. Yeah. So, crazy. like, in, in a way, it was bad, but in a way, you didn't have the apprehension of knowing who you were going to be mm. turning up to fight. Mm. So, you could turn up and just fight anybody, whereas, like, as you got life on, you, you started getting your title fights and stuff. You knew who you'd be fighting. Um, in, a, in a way, that for me, that was worse because I'm like, you know, even though you can be as good as what you are, you still get scared. You do. You get scared of it. You know, somebody's going to try to hurt you. Mm. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, I've, I've asked other people this that have come yeah. on, fighters that have come on, like, yeah. how, when you start to think about sort of fighting as a pro, fighting full contact. Yeah, and like compared to just a fight, like you're going out to the pub and you you, you catch into you, you sort of run into an altercation, yeah. where that just happens. It's like a flash, and then it kicks off, and then you deal with yeah. it there and then. Yeah. But with a fight, with a fight like you're talking about here, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like right, okay, in eight weeks I'm going to fight yeah. against this person that I don't really know, yeah. and they're training to fight me, and this person yeah. wants to do me some harm. Do you know what I mean? How did you? Deal with that, the, that sort of mental preparation of that. How, 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 what was your kind of um, because method I'm of dealing with that? Person who dislikes people, and I've got to try and go into a ring against somebody who has done nothing to me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I've got, I've got to try and build up a level of dislike to be able to hit them. Do you know what I mean? So I've got, I've got to go and commit violence on this person and try and knock them out. They're going to do the same to me, but I ain't got a clue who he is. And he, he could be a really nice person. And do you know what? Everybody I've ever met through the fights game has always been a really, really nice person. And yet you're still in there trying to kick seven side shades of shit out of each other. Mm. Um, it's weird. It's a, it's a weird sort of experience to go through. And that was, I think that's what made me more nervous is that like, they're nice, but I, 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 can't, I couldn't build up that anger and aggression. I mean, I'll never have been able to. It's really weird. And mm. um, as I've got older, I've turned into a like, miserable old git and I can be angry anytime. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, I was stay, younger, stay I was younger, I was angry. Yeah. I stay yeah. angry. Yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I was just chilled then. You know what I mean? I was a young, happy, but like, young lad. Like, you know what I mean? So you got, you know, all the time in the world to do what you want and you can't get angry at people, but mm. yeah. That's, that's what I found hard was, you know, all the training and stuff, I, I could do all that, all, you know, the running, the sparring, the pad work. That didn't bother me at all. I just got really nervous on the day of the fight, really, mm. and the build-up, like, oh, like, tonight I'm going to go have a fight for blow. He's probably a really nice person. I've got to go and hurt them, mm. or they were trying to hurt me. And that was what I was... So what? So how did you deal with that? How did you deal with that? What What did you tell yourself to... I try and, I try and switch off and forget about it. Mm. Um, I always used to try and do something 
like on that day. Like, I couldn't watch He Man. Watch He Man. Yeah, watch He Man. Put He Man on 18. Yeah, Baywatch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Airwolf. Mm. Miami Boys. Um, nah. I'd, I'd have to do something. I'd have to go, I don't get for a walk or. I couldn't, I couldn't just sit in the house because you just mull it over in your head and just keep it over and over and over again. And you change turns up the nervous wreck. I couldn't do it. So I was going to somewhere, go and do something. If it's going to walk around the man the centre and walk around and walk around the shops in Mary or do something, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it is a, it's a... Yeah, it, it's a big part of it, man. It's like I saw us talking yesterday. Um yeah. And saying like, do you know what I mean? Like the, the mental side of things is probably even more than the physical. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. To deal with yeah. getting in the ring and doing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think it wasn't until you experience it yourself yeah. that you realise what how big it is. So on yeah. a little on the little scale yeah. that I experienced it, yeah. never mind the scale that you experienced it, and then like the other guys, like you know what I mean, going on to K one or. Glory mm. or whatever, or world yeah. champion boxing level experience that with all the press and all that, people t you know, what I mean, you lose and you just get grief. People say, Oh, he's washed up, he's you might as well quit now. Yeah. You know, what I mean, all of that is just a flipping head, a head F that is my it's a head <laughs> fuck, you know, what I'm saying. So, it is, it is mad. The whole psychology of the whole thing, man, is crazy, yeah. man. Do you know, what I mean, yeah. Yeah. absolutely crazy, but yo, so. If now we're talking about we're talking about fighting, right? Yeah. I remember this when I was a kid. Talk about proper fighting. Never mind that nonsense you're talking about, mate. There's some proper fighting here. You know what I mean? Can you see it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. World of who, sport. Who, yeah, man. Who's this? Who's this man? Tell the people who, the, who can't see. Big Daddy it. and Giant Eye Stacks. Bad man. <clears throat> yeah, but um. I've got a bit of a story about Big Daddy. I've sat on his knee when I was oh, a Lord. kid. Yeah. <laughs> he was at, um, it wasn't the Civic Hall, it was the Wolverhampton Town Hall. Mm. Um, Where was that? Which is like, which is like round the corner, I think, somewhere. And um, it used to be a town hall. It was, I can't remember. I was about four, I think. Um, but it was in Wolverhampton. And um, yeah, I don't know how. Or what my dad had said or anything, but he managed to get me into the changing rooms at the back. Um, and I went and met Big Daddy. I was only about, about four or five. I vaguely remember it. Yeah. Yeah. That was good though. But again, again, it's the fight and the violence stuff in it. Although it's all put on, and you got the old women chasing the wrestlers and uh, eating them with the handbags and stuff. But he, you know, he's loving. <laughs> Serious, man. My my dad. I remember when I was little. I remember my dad used to watch it Saturday afternoon, World of yeah. Sport, watch the wrestling, and he'd be like knocking off ornaments and kill him. He's gonna. He'd be like twitching all over the gaff. You know, you have to give him like a big wide bear before he gets slapped in your face because he's just like on the TV, man. You know what I mean? It was crazy. But then I remember the day. Yeah. The day it switched from that. Um, it switched from that and it went to this. Yes. It went from it went from like live from Wolverhampton Town Hall yeah. to fifty thousand people watching these dudes fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was just all like the music, the razzmatazz, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it was like it's just the show, isn't it? It yeah. was a completely different thing, man. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's With the show. WWE or WWF as it was back then. That's it, yeah. Oh, it was wicked. Like, you know, when you're a kid and you're watching like, the American wrestling, um, he's like all oh, the, the show, the flamboyancy, and it, but like the building entrances, all the lights and the music, the water warrior there charging down, um, shaking the ropes and getting all the crowd hyped up. Isn't it? You know, the and, ultimate and I think warrior. that's what everybody liked about it, wasn't it? Bad man. Dun, yeah. nun, 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 nun. You know? <laughs> <laughs> ultimate warrior. The ultimate warrior. Bad man. Bad man. So I'm going to play a little bit of music. Yep. Right. So what does this bit, bit of music mean to you, bro? Yep. <laughs> so talk to him, man. Who's this, bro? Snap. Uh, the power. Um... I think it was on an album now 
99 or 90, 89 or something, um, or now Dance 90, whatever it was. Um, and I don't know, it was like, to me, it was like the, the start of all the dance music sort of era. Um, but it was that sort of time as well where I started wanting to get into, obviously, after watching He Man for so many years, <laughs> I wanted to get Hench, you know what I mean, and put my furry pants on. I want them Danes! <laughs> <laughs> So, um, the power. Yeah. <laughs> I saw and everything. Um, so I was wanting to, you know, I was beginning to do some like physical training, getting stronger and stuff. And again, it's all to do with the martial arts, getting bigger and stronger. And um, so when I was, you know, I was like 14, 15, my mum and dad had bought me some like dumbbells and some weights and stuff and, and a bench. I'd go to my bedroom at home. And I used to, every day I'd do something, you know what I mean? Picking some heavy things up and putting them back down. Yeah. Um, and I used to love it, but like this was like the music I used to listen to when I was doing it. And like that, that and all the other sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like putting like straining faces. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, very kind of good. Yeah. So talk about what, what age were you then? Sorry? How old were you? How old were you when you were doing that, listening 90, to the power? 90, I'd have been about 14. Wicked. Yeah. Wicked, wicked. Yeah. So like, you know, coming home from school, go to my bedroom, stereo on, snap the power on the, <laughs> on on the cassette. Yeah, the, the cassette what was it? The cassettes? Well the cassette player. Cassette, um, this man, one. Cassette. Yeah. That's it, mate. Proper music. <laughs> on cassette. On cassette. So there you you were fourteen. Um yeah. weights in the room, doing your martial yeah. arts, starting to take things a bit more yeah. seriously. You know yeah. what I mean? Um so what what was it what was the what was the situation like when you were going to train? How often were you training? Who were you training? Twice a week. Um, I got to I got to class twice a week. Yeah. Um, like on Mondays and Thursdays. But like by this time, I got like weights at home. I think I had like a, a speed ball in my bedroom at one point. Where I <laughs> cut, cut a hole in the carpet and screwed it down to the floorboards, right. and then screwed it through to the beam. It was just on elastic, doing you know I mean? like a mm. leather speed ball. I was doing that in the bedroom and stuff, so I was like, you know, getting into it then. But um, no, it was good. Heavy, 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 heavy. <laughs> so if I played this tune then, right, what does yep. this tune mean to you? He said that anything he could, he'd take the piss out of him. And his music taste was one of them. Yeah. And the way I would just say, it's the rhythm. Get into the rhythm and that'll get you skipping right. And that's what I always used to try and do. So was, this was this time, try and get into the rhythm of the skipping. I've been got the beat to your skipping. Hmm. Yeah, interesting, interesting. <laughs> it was interesting because I talked to all the fighters that they say while they're fighting, they're listening yeah. to they, they've got like a beat in the head. Yeah, like yeah. The, and they're yeah. like they, they'll attack to the rhythm of a song. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, like they'll be beating up somebody to Prince or the Power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, that's pretty. That's pretty sick. That is. That is pretty sick. That is pretty <laughs> sick. But yeah, but talking of sick and martial arts, right? You know yeah. what I mean? I can't go without mentioning this gentleman here. Let me take that off. Benny yeah, the Benny Jet. For this. Yeah. Benny the Jet, man. What, yeah. Talk to me about Benny the Jet. So, when I first saw him, it was like on this, my, my mate out of the road, um, when I was a little kid, they had Sky, and when it first came out, and there was at some German channel that used to play, like, um, I can't remember what it was called, it used like all contact karate and shows from Europe. Uh, in America, and Ben in the Jet was one of the fighters on there. Don Don the Dragon Wilson was another one. Yeah. Joe Lewis, all them sort of people. I was like the forerunners of like kickboxing, if you like, as it used to be called yeah. contact karate. Then it was a very big American thing, so it was mm -hmm. them who pushed got the start of kickboxing, if you like. Yeah, but like you know, you, you watch back now, and they're like not very technical. It was like. Just, Strong punches, strong kicks, not many combinations as such, really. But they were like the forerunners of like the sport that I've got into. Yeah. 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 I always remember, I mean, I've seen sort of highlight reels of this guy fighting, man, and yeah. he's just lethal boy. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So quick, so accurate, powerful. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I always remember him in that Jackie Chan film. Uh, Meals on Wheels. Yes. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That fight scene with Jackie Chan at the end, mate. It's probably one yeah. of the best fight scenes yeah. ever. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. amazing, amazing yeah. fight scene, man. Do you know what I mean? For anyone that hasn't seen that, big, 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 big. Benny the Jet. Yeah. One of the greatest to ever do it, man. Do you know what I mean? Right. And it's interesting. It's interesting you're saying that as well. Like, like the, he was one of like the kind of like the, the pioneers of kickboxing and that sort yeah. of stuff. Did he go over to like Japan or Thailand and stuff and fight as well? I think he used to go to Japan, I believe. Yeah. Mm. He used to um, fight the Japanese on a regular basis. Because yeah. um, that's where kickboxing came from, was that the Thais, the, their Thai boxing, um, and the Japanese with their karate wanted to like compete against each other. Mm. So they, they formulated full contact karate, so kickboxing. Um, and I believe that's where it all started from in like the, like the early 1970s, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so they said, what, well, karate guys, and, and Kyoko Shinkai karate as well. Mm. And they used to do yeah. like full contact karate, if you like, then against the Thai boxers. Um, and like the Thai boxers always used to win. And that's where this like fusion of the two sports came from. Um, and it was the forums like um, Benny Okadez and Joe Lewis and that who like formulated this like style of fighting. Yeah, yeah. Big stuff, man. Do you know what I mean? I love, I love hearing about the history of like origins of stuff, man. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's big stuff, real big stuff. Since we're talking about films, yeah, we're talking I'm about back. martial arts, man. You know what yeah, I mean? this was this was like a shift in was martial massive. arts on it. This was yeah, like, like a massive, like it's like people getting clocked with like real elbows and knees, and <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They weren't pulling them punches and kicks with no. in that film. And like, so tell tell the people who can't see the picture what what this is, bro. What it's a what film called On Back, and um, mm. Ty Warrior, and um, a guy named Tony Jar in it. Mm. Fantastic, amazing film. Martial arts in it is unbelievable. The guy's just like a, a like a really lethal gymnast. Um, that was flying knees and stuff. But the, the stunts in that film is unbelievable. There's like there's no like um, special effects really. He's not on any strings or anything with his back grips and stuff. And he's just hitting these people with like such ferocious knees and elbows that mm. you're like, it's gonna take your head off. But they're like Shows like in the uh, cut scenes from the so actual thing, like to wear crash helmets um, with a wig on. So when he's hitting them to try and describe, he's still trying yeah, to like this guy, with... this guy is blatantly having a crash helmet on. Yeah, you know I mean? this dude, yeah. no one's heads that shape. You know what I mean? No way. <laughs> blatantly had a crash helmet on. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. Nah, it, then, yeah, like, it, like, so from this film onwards, then really, you had like the other, um, what's it called, the raid. Raid and Raid Two, yeah. other like you know, hardcore films really, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. martial arts and stuff. And I think yeah. you know, back in the early nineties, you had like films like um, Best of the Best and like, all the kickboxer films and stuff. And they were like all like new cheesy martial art type of films with they no retreat, no surrender, all them sort of stuff. But then when like on back like, came out, sort of changed ones. everything. Yeah. There you go, American <laughs> Ninja. Um, showdown and no trick, John O'Brien. Yeah. They're like again, brilliant films back in the day. Mm. Um, you watch them now and compare them to like things like On Back and The Way, they're not a patch on them really. But mm. back in the day, they were like you know, really good films. I, thought, mm. I love them 100%. 100%. I, I remember how big a deal No Retreat, No Surrender was when it first came out. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, because that was the first time I saw John Claude Van Damme. I was like, yo, yeah. I'm a bad man, blah, 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 blah. Do you know what I mean? And <laughs> did the splits across the ring like this. Across the ropes. <laughs> All this business. You know, jumped off the guy's back and fly kicked the other dude. And, yeah. You know, I remember it, being at school. It was a fight kicked off. And it was only in the first year at senior school. So it was like 11. Mm-hmm. And there was this, this Indian kid. His name was Sudashan. All right, I'll never forget it. His name was Sudashan. He was in this fight with this other kid. And his sister was in the school, but she was like a year older or something. And it was about the time, same time as this film came out. And his sister's in like this, the big circle that used to form around the fights mm. at school. Fight, fight, yeah, fight, that's fight. It. fight, fight, fight. And all of a sudden, you hear his sister, Sudashan, no retreat, no surrender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. No, Everybody really. just started laughing. The fight ended there and then because it was just, oh, that's it. That's, that's ended the end of it. Like, 
<laughs> you still awesome. there, we... <laughs> but she was no dead retreat. serious with us. No retreat. <laughs> serious, man. Got someone with a violin. <laughs> you know what I mean? And a recorder. We recorder. Yeah, we're more likely recorder in Wolves. We were recorder in it all day. You know what I mean? One of them brown ones. Brown and cream. <laughs> serious, man. Yeah. But it, it, it was funny though, right? Because exactly like you saying, right? You, you had... Um, you had like the Bruce Lee era yep. with all the yep. Bruce Lee flicks. And then if you were lucky, you got to see like Jackie Chan. Yeah. I got to see some of the old school. So I remember the first Jackie yep. Chan film I saw was Drunken Master around my mate's house. Yeah. And I was just blown away by that because it was yep. just ridiculous. And then I started watching Jackie Chan stuff. But I would, I loved all these kind of Western martial yep. art films like No Retreat, No Surrender, China, yep. O'Brien, American. You know what I mean, all these kind of stuff I used to love. I don't think I've ever watched Showdown, you know, Billy Blanks. What well, I remember Billy Blanks from was flipping Tybo. You know what I mean? <laughs> you remember Tybo? That's what I remember Billy Blanks from. That was not a bit knees up to elbows and stuff. Just That's it, man. Really. That's it. That was it. Yo, he made a mint off that, man. So fair play to him. He made he an did. absolute mint off it. But um, yeah, so all these films are just like the, the best thing ever. Best of the best was another one as well, wasn't it? Yeah. It's another one amazing. Thing, amazing. Ninja yeah. Domination and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Enter but then, the Ninja was one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enter all that sort of, ninja. all that so, madness, man. Like white guy with a massive, amazing moustache. <laughs> <laughs> Afro or something. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> but then, but then, when when you sort of compared what was happening in the West compared to what was happening in the East with yeah. the, the the films at the time, like the you know what I mean, like. Jackie Chan films and um, Sammo Hung, UMBL, yeah. all those yeah. kind of dudes just, uh, that were happening at the same time. Yeah, the two just didn't even compare, man. It just no, didn't yeah. compare no. at all. You no. know what I'm saying? These were on the same par. But then when you looked at things like On Back, when On Back made it big over mm -hmm. here, man, that was just like another just jump yeah. in what was happening. And I think yeah. having things like that, like The Matrix, I think was one as well. When The Matrix came That's out, right. yeah. Everything yeah. all of a sudden said, you know what, we have to be on par with that because that's the new yeah. level, innit? Do you know yeah. what I mean? For well, mainstream. I think, I think films like The Matrix as well took inspiration from the Oriental films, like the Jackie Chan films, oh, the old man. traditional yeah, like Kung Fu films, you know, with like the, the flying and all that sort of stuff. And I think The Matrix took a real influence from them. Mm. Um, and that's where the two sort of like fused together, I think. Um, so then you've got the other sort of films that came along with it, like um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Mm. Films like that came along. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. UMU Ping, man. Yeah, big big films, man. Big films. Yeah. But yeah, On Back was, well, that was some brutal stuff. And <laughs> like you were saying about the the Raid and the Raid yeah. 2, yeah. that was a just <laughs> deep films, man. Deep. Violent and violent films. But very, very when you, deep. When you film. watch the actual martial arts in them as well, they're like really skillful people. What mm. they actually do is like, you know, it's real. It's real. You know, really dangerous stuff. Very nasty stuff. With yeah. they, love, they love knives, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like Indonesian yeah. in it. It's like, yeah. was it, is it a scrimmer or Kali or something? What is yeah. it? It's um, Silat, Pentax. Silat, Silat, Silat Pentax. Yeah. Silat, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. them do those little hook knives that go over the yeah. finger. Them, oh. <laughs> It's grim, man. There's too many people getting stabbed up in that, man. It's brutal, <laughs> brutal. They're well, not getting stabbed once either. It's a that, series yeah, it's like, of times. It's nothing. Yeah. Slash, slashy tendons and all sorts. Of, yeah, take it easy, mate. <laughs> Calm down. Seriously. Is it, they're big films. Amazing film. And that, The Raid, like yeah. Hollywood actually copied it, blatantly copied it. Like if you see the remake of Dread, have you seen Judge, Judge Dread? Yes, that's in the tower. Is it the same? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. The re basically remade the whole film. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But just yeah. made it. You know what I mean? Westernized. But that, that's a good film, though, to be fair. They remade it. It, it, is, it. it is a good film. They did it, it, they did film. it proper. They did it justice, to be fair. So I can't knock that. I can't knock that at all. So if we go... So, okay. So let's take a little segue musically. Yep. Into this. Here and there. And they've got rock music playing. And, you know, you build on that vibe. And you, you get used to that. You know, I like this sort of music. I like this atmosphere. And then when I've got into, like, as I've got all into my motorbikes and stuff as well, um, anywhere that's sort of related to, like, mountain bike needs, whether it be a pub or a cap or whatever, mm -hmm. there's, there's rock music. Yeah. You know, it's always rock music that's, like, associated with that. So, yeah, that's where that, like, sort of liking for music comes from, regarding rock. So. 
So let's talk about your biking thing, man. Do you know yeah. how, deep, how deep are you in the game? How do you, you know what? Biking? Not as deep as I'd like to be, to be honest. Um, <laughs> is that having time? Um, balls deep I, then. Nah. <laughs> nah. I, I, I've got my mountain bike. It's um, at the back. I, I need a tire on it. I've got, get, I've got to get back on the road, to be fair. I've had a yeah. um, couple of like, you know, years where I've not really used it as much as I'd like to. Mm. For one thing, one reason or another, like with lockdown and stuff like that and work being busy. Um, I've not used it. I need to get back on the road just to get back into it. Yeah. yeah. God, how's that? How's that for service? <laughs> I saw it. Yeah, yeah, I don't get jack. It is. But, oh. never, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, I, I don't know where that comes from, but that's part of me. <laughs> that's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, B. Nice work. <laughs> nice work. Oh, you know what I mean? On that note, let me drop yeah. this tune. Go on. So talk to me, man. Talk to me about like listening to Beanie Man and all that kind of stuff, man. <laughs> You you ACDC to Beanie Man. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't think of it from me at all. But like I said, I've got like a, a massive broad spectrum of like yeah, music yeah. tastes and stuff. Um, I mean, the, the Jamaican like dancehall music come from just being going to Jamaica, really. To be honest, um, to be fair, before that, really doing a lot of like martial arts training around Wolverhampton, there's a lot of Jamaican guys into it into the martial arts, the tie boxing, the kickboxing, mm. um, with all the, like, the past decent fighters, they've all been black guys. Um, they have. Um, and, you know, so you mix in with that sort of um, culture, dance or music comes with it, because a lot of people have the dance or music on, again, when they're training and bits and mm. pieces. So you hear it, you hear it around it all the time. But then on holidays to Jamaica, I love the place, love the place. Um, so, you know, it's just, I don't know, I don't know what it is, I just like the, the I just, it just, there's no reason why I, I just like it, I don't know, mm. I've got to explain why. <laughs> just the vibe, it's just, but yeah. the, the, thing, the thing is with music and with films and anything like this, right, with yeah. stuff we're talking about now, it, there's not a reason you like anything, do you know what I mean, no, it's no. kind of like the vibe about it. Yeah. The time you, you heard like it, it you? yeah, yeah, the yeah. time you heard it, that has a big yeah. importance, it's, got, it's like a hook, do you know yeah. what I mean, like you, like you say, I, I showed you like a He-Man, and yeah, cast you back to when you was eight years old. Yeah, thinking, yeah man, I yeah. want to get hench, man. I want to get yeah. swole. You know what I mean? Or, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You hear the power, and you're thinking about like lifting up weights in your bedroom, like yeah. you know what I mean? Trying yeah. to get, you know what I mean? It it, it casts those hooks, man. Do you know it what is. I mean? So this is obviously, and and I think like what you're saying there, man. Like around in Wolves and Birmingham and places like yeah. that, it's kind of like a melting pot where you got all different cultures <laughs> in the same thing. And like in martial yeah, arts. Stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would you say, would you agree with it? Like martial arts is kind of like, anywhere I've been anyway, it's kind yeah. of been like, there hasn't been any um, cultural yeah. segregation. You get no. me? Do you know what I mean? Everyone's just in there together. Yeah. And you, you haven't got time to think about that. If you, Especially if you're fighting, if you're fighting full yeah. contact, man. You ain't got time yeah. to think about, that's a white guy, well, that's a black guy, that's an Asian guy. Because yeah. you'll just get it's kicked in your mouth, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what will kick you in your mouth? Yeah. So you haven't got time to think about that. <laughs> it is very, very, very true. And like the amount of people I've met who, are, you know, even now very good friends from different cultural backgrounds through martial arts, you know, um, Jamaicans, Africans, Asians, white people from different cultures as well. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, it's unbelievable. And like you'll see, it, you'll, you'll meet them there, and there's, there's no discrimination. There's no difference between anybody anyway. And it's all, I think it's all down to just a martial art. I really do. Mm. Because you can go to any other sport, and maybe I think you do get some form of segregation in the sports a little bit, <clears throat> to a degree. Mm. But not with, I don't think you get it in martial arts or such. No, no I, I don't really. think so. No, and not well. Not in my my brief experience. No, in it, I don't think so. I think as well that that there's a, there's a lyric, there's a line in um, the Matrix, man. I've said it before, yeah. where like Neo goes into 
the one place and there's this orient there's this like um there's this Asian guy sitting down there cross legged and he yeah. comes up to him and he goes, Are you the I don't even know what he's that Oracle I don't think it was the Oracle, but anyway, it comes up the to one, him. Now. Wasn't he? Was he the one? No, 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 Neil's the one, isn't it? But this dude, he goes he, he's looking for oh, somebody. The, and then he goes he goes the key, um, gatekeeper Yeah, key, something like that. Key well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He goes he goes to the dude, he goes to the dude, it, you know, that's the dude he goes, and the guy goes, He apologize, he goes, What are you apologizing for? And he just yeah. starts fighting him and they have like yeah. a mad fight on top of a table. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they separate. And he goes, well, I just had to see if you were who you said you were. And he goes, yeah, why yeah. didn't you just ask me? Yeah. And he was like, well, you don't, you don't really know someone until you fight them. Do you know what, yeah. I, mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I, and I yeah. think you, you, you kind of, when you're in the trenches fighting with someone, sparring someone week in, week out, you get to realise yeah. what someone's made of. You know what I mean? Huh? And yeah. like, if you're, paying, if you're preparing for a fight and yeah. the whole gym's preparing for a fight and helping you, it yeah. kind of builds that bond of like them against us and blah, yeah. you know what I mean? You've been through the trenches, man. You know I, mean? I know like when I've been on the pads with Tony, Tony trying to kill me on the pads yeah. and people have kind of helped me and brought me up and the next day yeah. I come in and I'm bruised up or whatever and people help you psychologically through. It yeah. builds that bond in it and it's like, yeah. you're not thinking about like anything else apart from just let me get to 11 o'clock when I can go home. <laughs> That's what you're thinking about. That's it. You know what I mean? That is it. Yeah, 100%, you know what I mean? mate, 100%. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's big stuff, man. It's big stuff. It's big mm -hmm. stuff. 100% <laughs> big stuff, mate. Now, I think, so, in, in the martial arts stuff, like, when yeah. you were, so, like, you, you started winning titles. Yeah. So, how did that progress from there? So, you won your first title. You, you, you spoke earlier. You won your yeah, first yeah. title. Um, By accident, you tripped up, fell and knocked someone out and won a title. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, I mean? what happened? How did, how did that progress from there? So, so what, what's actually, in your mind? Well that, well, that was like a bit unexpected, really. Um, mm. And then from there, I thought, I'm, I'm crappy names. I can't remember the names. Mm. It's one thing I can't remember, is people's names. Um, but I think your name's Paul. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, so like, went to win that, win, win that one title, and I fought a guy who was, he was a, an, another English champion. Um, Beat him, and I fought this a Scottish champion. Um, his name was Brian Wallace. I remember him because he had the same name as me. Brian Wallace, his name was. Fought and beat him, and then so I went on and had a British title fight then, um, under four contact rules. Um, won that one, and then got offered, offered to have um, another British title fight. No, sorry, and the Commonwealth title fight. Not long after that one won that one and then I thought well I'll go into the it's called low kick fighting then it's like the K1 rules if you like um, right, right. there was just no knees so it was like um, boxing kick it above the waist but you can keep the legs as well yeah. um, so I wanted to have a couple of goals a couple of fights at doing that um, and the first fight I was offered um, came off the back of fighting um, oh god Running down crappy names. The other, the other English guy that I fought, the only English champion that I fought, mm -hmm. we both fought together. His coach um, had like an issue with me or something where the fight limit was 75 kilos. He weighed in at 75 kilos. I weighed in at 75 and a half kilos. So. But because there was no title or anything like that, he was still within the range. Yeah, and there was there was a kick off and all that sort of stuff, um, and they were Marnie and this that the other, and part of that like group of fighters was Simon Aston, and through that sort of like um, fighting, I got to fight Simon Aston for the first time in Wolverhampton, um, so fourteen uh, British title, um, one. And then we wanted a rematch, so we fought again um, for the Commonwealth title over 10 rounds this time, but low kick rules. And again, I won that one as well. Um, but now, we really good mates. It's really weird. Because mm -hmm. when we put first fought, because we were both like literally shaved heads, same size, same like name and everything. People thought we were brothers. Yeah. Um, and I really, really wish I'd got 
playing videos, like on the, on the videos of the products. I really do because you know, look, look back at them there and have a look at them because they were two really, really good products. And me and Simon even now get emails from people, um, you know, what say emails, what comments on Facebook and stuff like that about the Commonwealth sort of fight we had because the what was weird about that one is that it, we were like last on the bill and it was like like half past 12, one o'clock in the morning we were fighting at the West Brom Gala Bats. It was ridiculous. Like everybody ready for bed and we're there scrapping with each other. Um, <laughs> ten rounds. <laughs> yeah, ten rounds. Like one o'clock in the morning. It was stupid. Been long time, um, days, man. Great. Yeah. Um, but like it was, it was, from what I remember, a really, really good match because mm-hmm. like Simon's, He's a fantastic fighter. Um, do you know what I mean? And he, you know, the world champion in his own right. Um, he was so he was like a Thai boxer. I was a kickboxer, and we both come together and like sort of like fused in the middle type of thing. And it was a really, really good match. Yeah. Um, and I just happened to win it. Um, I just happened to win it. Was, you know, nothing against him at all. He's a fantastic fighter, but you know, I can win two fights he had really, really good matches. Mm-hmm. I just wish I had the video to watch him. Carbally, this is my again, right? Would you say kickboxing, martial arts in general gets the shine that it should do? No, nowhere in this near. country, nowhere near. When you've got things like, like obviously, I've retired a long time ago from fighting, um, but you've got things like um, K1 and Glory, uh, you've got um, oh, what's the other one, one, one championship, sorry. The w- one championship, the one, yeah, one championship. You've got Bama. Um, there's there's another one that does, um, it's like a, a mixed martial arts, but they've got their own branch of kickboxing there as well. Mm. Um, probably with the name of it, the British one. Um, but I think it's getting more and more popular now. But things like Glory and K1 and all that yeah. sort of stuff, I think, had they been around when I was fighting. I genuinely believe they would have had a better mix of fighters um, mm. because everybody's gone down the MMA route now. Yeah. And yeah. me personally, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of it. I think it's good. I think it's good for the, for the sport and stuff, but I think it's it's like blown out of proportion to what it actually is. Whereas when it originally started, the Ultimate Fighting Championship it was designed for different martial arts to compete against each other. Mm. And it was brilliant. And that's where you got the Horse Graces, Frank Shamrocks, and all them sort of stuff, and the really different sort of martial arts backgrounds. And you could see the different styles. Mm. But over the years, like this mixed martial arts has developed into a martial art on its own. Yeah. And that ain't the point of what it originally started out to be. And mm. um, originally started to, be like to see what martial art was better than the other. Um, so I think that's it like, it's ruined itself over the years, I think. Um, but I think. They've had to incorporate more and more rules into it as the years have gone on. So where it was like a no old bar thing before, where you couldn't do no groin shots, no biting and no gouging. Mm. Whereas now you could be on the floor for 30 seconds, you stopped and stood up. And yeah, you know what I mean? I think the old ethos of it has been changed into something completely different to what it started out being. Mm. Mm. Um, but I still watch the, the glory fights. Um, do you know what I mean? I think they're, they're far better. The far better. There's even a glory channel I found on there. Uh, was it Pluto TV? You can get a free app. There's a, there's a glory kickboxing channel on there. What's that? Oh, is it? Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Did yeah. yeah. The only reason I, I, I just, again, it's an advert on Instagram or Facebook or something. Yeah. Pluto TV, free on your phone, free app. Download it, watch it. I've looked, skim through the channels. Glory kickboxing. Oh, I've some of that. Download right, that. Yeah. yeah. It's free. Don't you fire stick or your phone? Wicked. Oh, yeah. man, I'm on that. I'm on that this weekend, mate. No question. I'm all about yeah, that, Yeah, Ricky Boxley channel. Brilliant. Freeze my favourite price, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah well, that, that, that's one of the reasons why, like, um, the one championship. Yeah. It's it's it looks it looks amazing for a start, but then the yeah. fighters that they've got on it, man, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like some of the Thai yeah. fighters they've got on there, man, yeah. jeez, man, killers, yeah. man, absolute yeah. killers. Do you know like what I mean? Fights yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd I'd love to see some of those Thai fighters fight 
in the UFC. Do you know what I mean? The, the, yeah. the small weight, the light weights. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? The really light atom weights and stuff, man. They're, I think they'd kill some of the UFC fighters, mate. As yeah. long as they don't go to the ground. The stand looks ridiculous. Yeah. That's shut up ridiculous. Like, mm. They've had to change lots of the UFC rules and everything else. They're trying to keep it stood up. And that's why the likes that Conor McGregor, the way he's doing so well, because he's a kickboxer, he's not a grappler. Mm. So he keeps everything stood up. He goes to the ground, he, he loses every time. Mm. And I, th- I think the stand up fighting, from a spectator sport, is far better. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can I can kind of appreciate when you see some guys that like like when Hoist Grace used to do his thing, and yeah, you see yeah. some guys in UFC now they're just like it's like watching two squirrels fighting, man. They're just yeah, the way the move is just <laughs> ridiculous. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's it's amazing yeah. to watch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I do if you understand some, it. If you understand it, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't really that's understand it, but I can appreciate it. I don't yeah. I don't know nothing about that, but I can yeah. appreciate it, but. There's, it's easier to appreciate someone just standing and banging in it. It's, yeah. it's, just, it's just easy to. <laughs> it is. It you know is. what I'm saying? It's easy to appreciate, man. Someone just throwing hands or knees or feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I think, I yeah. think there's more, I mean, although there's more rules in like stand up fighting, I think it makes you have to be more technically better. I think, whereas if you just pick your legs, you go to the floor and roll around on the floor, you don't have to be that it's more of a brawl then. I don't know. That's what, that's what I think. Anyway, but mm. I understand that you know it's very technical. If they are they are very good at what they're doing, but from a spectator sport point of view, I don't think it's that good. That's why they've had to stop the, the grappling so much now. Thirty seconds and they stand them up because it was losing the audiences. Mm. I, I t- <laughs> Do you know what though? If somebody puts you in a rear naked choke, boy, that ain't fun. No, I know that. That shit. That, that shit ain't fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, yeah. That shit's not fun, mate. I'll tell you that. You know what I mean? There's no question that shit works. Whether you like how it looks or not, man, that it shit works, yeah, man. You guys see it work, quick. But it's, it, it's selling tickets, and it? People are watching it. This um, is it, man. It's, which it's is massive. a shame. It's like, massive. Like, it's massive. Yeah. Things like boxing. Look where boxing's mm. gone from to what it is now. Like back mm. in the nineties, boxing was massive. People like, like you know, Nigel Benz and Fisher Banks and stuff like that. Mm. Who, who is it now? Really? Well, in, in boxing, right? Like, Tyson Fury. Fury. Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury. Yeah. <laughs> AJ, yo, well, yeah. do you know what I mean? The, the guys on that level, they're still getting paid, man. They're still oh, like, yeah. stupid yeah. money. At them, oh, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But well, there's I, not I think... as many. There's not yeah. as many around no more. Yeah. Is there? So would you say would you say in the martial arts world, right? Like yeah. in kickboxing, Thai boxing, whatever. Yeah. Would you say that like the top tier, like guys in glory and the one yeah. championship and whatever, yeah, they're getting decent sort of ched. But then there's a big gap between that the oh, normal yeah. people at like the, the local yeah, yeah. shows. That there's nothing yeah. in between. Yeah. To, I think to get there, I think there's an element of luck. Mm. Um to get especially if you're a British fighter. There's, there's one guy who's in the um, in K1. Uh, is it K1? And Chad Sugden from he's from New, uh, Newark. Um, he wanted me to fight his dad a few years ago. <laughs> the way he said, the way yeah. he said that, I'm <laughs> fighting your dad, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the chip, that's it's on the chip shop. Yeah, um, man, that's as warm as that, it gets, you know. <laughs> Never mind you, mate. Call your dad. You're right, I'm about to your dad. <laughs> no, his, his dad was um, was a world champion himself. Um, wow. Okay. He was. What, what's his name? Dean Sugden. Oh, I've heard, I have heard that name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Dean yeah, Sugden, yeah, yeah, but it's his son. He had he had two sons. There was Chad Sugden and Bailey Sugden. Mm. I think Chad Sugden went into boxing, so he's a professional boxer now. And Bailey Sugden's in the K one. Um, and, you know, they're doing really, really well. But I think, isn't it, like, you don't see many British fighters get to that sort of level um, without some, like, an element of luck or, you know, all the, the sponsorship and stuff to get there, I think. Mm. Um, but I think Britain's got, you know, a massive, like, you know, store of, like, fantastic fighters who need to be given a break, I think. Mm. They genuinely do. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think there's a, there's a few um, British fighters getting over into like things like one, 
yeah. in the one championship now, um, like yeah. tie boxing. Um, but I, 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 I don't know. I'm kind of at the loop, but I don't know. There hasn't been any shows locally. For, well, obviously, for really lockdown, there haven't been any yeah. shows, but I haven't heard anything big locally in ages. There used to be ones in Wolverhampton all the time, do you know what I mean? At City yeah. Hall City and Ball Light time. Bar yeah. and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There used to be always... Uh, always you, always you shows one they had, one of the biggest shows I can remember recently um, was with, was it called then? Return of the Legends or something like that. Mm. Um, and basically it was fighters from like my sort of era of fighting. So Simon Aston fought on it. Um, oh, and a couple okay. of fighters from back in the day come out of retirement in you know, the, the 40s and stuff and, and fought. It was brilliant. Um, but like, if, you, if you, British kickboxing got to that sort of area now where they've got to go back 15 years to get some fighters to put a show on, what does mm-hmm. that tell you? Well, it might be a case of what you were saying before. Everyone's yeah. moved towards MMA, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Rather than kickboxing, type yeah. boxing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, they are. People are going to put an MMA that. show on in the back of a, a social club with a sellout. Yeah, run out, man, every yeah. time. Put a, you know put I mean? a kickboxing show on in the Civic Hall now. You wouldn't get, you'd probably get, what, a couple hundred people there to watch it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Saying it's that, though, they did, they did have, they did, saying that, they did have, um, was it Muay Thai Grand Prix in Wolves? Um, yes. Before the lockdown, that yes, that was did, a good yeah. show. That was, that was a big yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I hadn't heard of anything before that for ages, absolutely no. ages. No, it's been a, it's been a long time since we've been a decent yeah. mm. like, kickboxing stand-up fighting show. Um, I think it's a shame, really, because I used to enjoy going to it. Yeah, especially yeah. as well local. It's a good night out as well. It's wicked, mate. It's wicked. Yeah. Did, did you come with us the one time when they had the white collar boxing on it? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. What, was, what was his name that guy he come in he got like the, the sparkly suit and stuff on and the, and the he had loads of savory on um, you know the bracelets and necklaces and stuff yeah was oh, some criminal oh, some like, like gangland yeah. sort of criminal bloke yeah mate it, uh, it was funny man funny <laughs> That was a, that was a good night out. That was that was, was a good night out. Was White a good kind night of boxer, out funny, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like people giving it the big end until they get punched in the mouth, and then it's like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you just see this is real. Yeah, man. All the rudeness <laughs> left the guy's body. You know what I mean? He just like turned his back. <laughs> man turned his back. You know. <laughs> Big haymakers. Have you felt the draft off him in the background? Yeah, man. Dude, just taking shots on the back of his head. You know what I mean? <laughs> Running? Oh man, <laughs> amazing! Absolutely amazing. So, so okay. W- would you ever consider? Yeah. Like, like you said, that there was like that return of the champions. Would you ever consider yeah. coming back for one? Have you still got it in you? I, don't know. I, I, I think I need to lose about four stone. I think. <laughs> well, um, far from that, but whatever, yeah. man. But you know what I mean. I, I, would, would you I'd, ever I'd consider? Love to be able to. I really would. I'd, I'd love to be able to. Um. Whether I would or not, I don't know. It's having the time to put if the time to put the training in. I think that's the yeah. that's the thing, you know. Because like back then, I got no kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was a single bloke living with my mom. Do you know what I mean? It was easy. I could just come and go as I please, do train what I want. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, like now it's different. It's it's hard. You got kids and family and work and stuff like it. It's, it's a lot more difficult now. And on onto the top of that, you've got age injuries you pick up really easily i thought yeah. it was a good idea about six months ago to go for a run and i've still got a groin injury now <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible it's horrible <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah, idea yeah. you just what sneezed you? sneezed yeah. too hard man like yeah, tear a muscle you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 i think i told yeah. spit off tell me yeah. The cough of an embolism here or something. <laughs> you know, you know I mean? pick up injuries, it's, it's just too easy. I got up yeah. too quick the other day and went dizzy. Um, <laughs> it's just mad. Yeah. But like I say, I've got this, like, you just pick up injuries. I'm trying to get back into my running slowly. But as I go, it's like, it's too hard. I think I need to lose a bit of weight first. But you know what? It, it'd be nice to have something to train for again for mm. yeah that's what i've found hard over the past like a few years anyways having a, a reason to train because when you when you're training for a fight you've got a goal you know yeah. you, you've got to wait you've got to hit you've got to be a certain fitness you, you know where you need to be in your head 
Do you know what I mean? So you know what you need to be at. Mm. When that goal isn't there, it's so hard. Mm. Because you've got one time goal. You've got, you've got to set yourself a goal. Um, and, and, and you've got no motivation. That's the thing. The motivation, if you've been a fighter before, isn't there. You've got nothing to aim for. That, that's mm. I find that really hard. Even mm. now. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So do, do, do you think that like when you were fighting the... Oh no! You, you got that goal that you're going to fight, but is there like yeah. the, the the nerves and the fear of saying, right, you know, I need to prepare because the dude I'm going to fight, he's probably at running yeah, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's that too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's too man. It's natural. All that you, know, you just get comfortable now, innit? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't need to. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't need to, but you still want to. You want to? Mm. Yeah, it's it's hard, but you it's hard one. I don't, I, I genuinely don't like feeling the way as I do, like old, unfit. Do you know what I mean? Because you think, well, look what I used to be able to do, and you can't do it no more. I find that really yeah. frustrating for some reason. Mm. Um, do you know I mean? Simple things like tying your shoelaces isn't as easy as it was 10 years ago. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> you may, yeah. When you get up, you make noise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cleaning your teeth is a chore now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> The toothpaste got some weight to it now. <laughs> yes. yeah. Oh god! Mashing potatoes a workout. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh mate, hundred percent know what you're chatting there, man. <laughs> Serious man, everything makes noise now. Your knees creaking. Yeah, ratchet. Oh you know what I'm yeah, knees creaking. Walking upstairs. Oh, it's horrible. I hate it. I don't like it. Wish I could do something about it. So what? So what? So what you're doing, man? You, you're growing old disgracefully, then? Or what yeah, are you saying? I hate it. I'm going, I think I'm turning into an, an old miserable git. Sl- yeah. Slowly. Do you remember the old Harry Enfield comedy sketch? The old git. I'm turning into one of them. See. Slowly but surely, I think. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what we need to do? We need to get on. You, you ever listen to um, Joe Rogan? Yes. The Joe, Joe Rogan podcast, mm. right? He's he's all deep in this stem cell stuff. Okay. Like they inject stem cells, man, to just like rejuvenate all your blipping bad bits. <laughs> I, I, need them. I need I'm, some stem cells. I need mean, some stem cells. I'm, I'm looking for I need, I, I think go, I need go to go buy me. reptilian stem cells. So if something drops off, just grow a new one. Yeah, yeah, or some earthworm <laughs> stem cells or something, man. Just chop it off, it comes back. You know what I mean? Serious, man. Really. All about that modification <laughs> shit, boy. <Yeah. laughs> you know what I mean? So, no, let me show you one more picture. Let me show you oh. one more picture. Talk to me about these, bad man. Yeah, oh, the Rocky films are a classic, you know. You can't get away from them. One's on the TV, you have to watch it. Um, you know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk to me. So... Yeah, well, Rocky films, you know, they explain themselves, don't they? They're just brilliant motivational films, it may for anybody. Like the soundtracks for when you're training. I used to have the soundtrack on, like the uh, MP3 player when I go running. It's got Rocky soundtracks. Um, and anybody who's any done any ever done any form of like combat sport, no matter what it is, will at some point train to a Rocky soundtrack. They've got to be done. If you haven't. You ain't me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you haven't, you haven't done. You're not doing it right. No, you're not. No, you're not training hard enough. You put, you put a rocky soundtrack on. You start punching a bag hard and you keep yeah, harder right. and you run faster. You that's do. It, like, you especially this bit, this bit. This bit. That's. That's it. That's the bit, man. <laughs> so you got your step. That's the bit, man. If you're sparring when that's on, like, there's some war going on. You know, people are throwing some hands. <laughs> The time has been gone two minutes ago, but you're still going. It's still swinging, man. It's still swinging. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. <laughs> that tune. That tune is just. It, it. It's synonymous with just war and yeah. just trying to <laughs> putting yourself in hospital, doing some <laughs> foolishness that you shouldn't be doing. That's what that's for. You know what I mean? Amazing. I mean, even even the newer films, like the later ones, mm. like, I think they're still brilliant films. They've been written really, really well. Um, but it's not more like the lighter films aren't like a boxing film. It's more of like a like a psychological film, really. What we you've got what's going on inside his head. Mm. You know what I mean? And 
you know, you can associate yourself with how he's feeling after you've got this eye from fighting to fight. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? And that's what a lot of people, when they watch it on the eye, but they're crap young, they're crap young, they ain't. Yeah. Listen to what they're saying. If, you, if you've done something like that, and you've retired from something you've loved for a very long time, mm. you understand? Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah. It is because, like, sort of Rocky, what was it from? Rocky 5, is it 6, 5? Yeah. 5 was yeah, five, and, five and then the, Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> But but then you look at the um, the Creed ones as well, the two Creed films. Yeah, where Rocky's kind of training up Apollo Creed's son. Yeah. Spoiler alert. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of like he's moved on his life. You know what I mean? His his, his life's kind of turned taken a, a bad turn and that. Yeah. But he's got his business and he's just out of the boxing thing completely. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. he's just trying to keep his head down and do things. But then this guy comes into his life and he starts to train him and it's all kind of coming back. And it it, it, it is, it, like you say, man, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like the life of like someone who's fought all his life, yeah. got to the top, and then he's kind of, he's had to not, not, not on the head because of age or whatever, and then sure. come back into it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, 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 it's a weird one, man. It is, it's a weird, can you relate to that? You know what I mean? In yeah. your position, can you yeah. relate to that? Mm. I, can, I can to a degree, yeah. And that's what I mean, like, you know, you, retired from fighting and but you still got that desire to be in that sort of like air arena do you know what i mean it's mm. it's weird you can understand that he's you know he wants to like when he wants to get back his he wants to get his license back in number six yeah um, he, he wants to get an a fight again and he's he has that like he has that talk with like the um the license council who won't yeah. give it to him and he has that speech with it yeah i can understand that totally i can um, yeah, so it, it's hard. You, you can you can completely relate to it, but if, if you've not done that, you can't relate to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's it, it is a hard thing, man, because like you put yourself to get into the shape to fight in at the top level. Yeah. Right. Do you know what I mean you've gone through some shit? You've gone through some stuff. You've made some sacrifices, a load of sacrifices to get yeah. to where you've got to, and then. Do you know what I mean? As time goes on, time doesn't wait for anybody. You know what I mean? You, you, right. There's like a, there's a short window to do it, man. Do you know what I mean? And like, mm. like you say now, you can kind of relate to that. But the fact is, remains though, you still did it. Yeah. You still, you've still done something yeah. that 99% of people on this planet, Bob more, 99.9% of people on this planet will mm. never do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Will never, ever do. You know what I mean? So that's why I find it, Really interesting. That's the gold dust with having people like you on yeah. and other fighters that I've had on to come and talk to them about it, to pick their yeah. brains about yeah. this whole thing. Because it, it's kind of like getting a window into the, the how how you're wired in to do some yeah. shit like yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? I've had a small experience of it, but yeah. it's kind of like, you know, I'm not really made for this, man, because this is some mad shit. Do you know what I mean? But <laughs> to go to, the, to those levels, do you know what I mean? Where it's yeah. like your yeah, world level. That's a different yeah. thing, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it amazes me. I, I, it amazes when I, me. When I first started fighting, I had absolutely like no intentions of ever getting to the level of it. Mm. I really didn't. I didn't. I didn't think I'd ever get that far. But like as it was going on, I kept winning and winning and winning, and kept getting off with different things. So yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I'll just go along and see where I can get with it, and then ended up going for the world title, and yeah. eventually won one. <laughs> Yeah, so I genuinely never thought I'd get to that sort of level. I really didn't. Um, you know, really glad that I have. Do you know what I mean? So I've won something I never thought I would. Yeah. Um, and along the way, I've you know, done some amazing things, met some amazing people as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, seriously, mate, do you know what I mean? So it, it, it's, it is... It, 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 it's, it, it's crazy when you stop and think about it, man. Do you know what I mean? Because the, you, you've managed to go to that level like you say you weren't actually you never had that in your mind you just did the next thing and the next thing yeah. and it just led you there you know what i mean yeah. and yeah. a lot of people have seem to have the same story where yeah. they never really set out to fight you know what i mean like mm -hmm. dean dean never set out to fight but then he's just like there and you've yeah. never set out to fight and yeah it is you just kind of accidentally find that you were fighting it's just an opportunity you think i'll have a go mm. you know what i mean i'll go and have a go and see how i get on you know what i mean it's yeah. just like testing what you've done. Mm. So, you know, is what a practice is it going to work for me? So I'll, I'll go and try it. Mm. 
Do mm-hmm. you think you've always had that in you? As in, because a lot of people are kind of scared of failure, scared of, yeah. you know what I mean? What, what if, what if? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do, do you think that way? As in like, you like, you don't, you do. just do shit and you don't really think about it. And then you go, oh, right, it worked. <laughs> oh shit, you didn't. Do you know what I mean? I'm, you... I'm like that, I'm like that now. I never used to be. Mm. Um, I used to always work for one, for one to have a go, for one to have a go. Um, and it's only through doing stuff and building up the confidence to do things all my life that I've gone, you know what? Fucking have a go. If yeah. it don't work, it don't work. Yeah. Um, and so everything really, <clears throat> um, so like, like, you know, it only comes from doing doing things, just, just have a go at doing them. If you're good at it, great. If you're not good at it, try harder next time. Yeah. And or do continue. something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or do something else, yeah. You, you found you're not good at that and that's not your thing. Do something yeah. else, man. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone's got yeah. one thing that they're good at. So, yeah. 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 It's this. Nah, no, it's inspirational shit, man. It's this. Yeah. So, I'm going to ask you one last question then, man. Go on. What What would you say over the whole time of you, your your martial arts life yeah. Yeah. still ongoing. You know what I mean? Your martial arts life ain't dead yet, fam. <laughs> still on it. You know yeah. what I mean? What has martial arts done for you? I've asked everyone this same question. What has martial arts done for you? I think it's what would you say? kept me on the right path. I think. Um, because like I say, when I was a kid, it could have very easily gone into a life of mine, if you like. Um, a lot of the kids I went to school with, of being to prison, they've come out of prison, they've committed crimes and all been on drugs and all sorts of stuff. There's like a, what one kid I went to school with and I still see him there when he's just a like he's a mess. Um and I think it's 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 done that for me. So it's it's kept me out of trouble. It's given me like um guidance in life if you like. Mm. So it's kept me self disciplined but also disciplined in life with everything that I do as best as I can. Um, I think that's a good thing that I've got from it personally. Yeah. And um, of yeah. course, I've got the motivation stuff to like keep myself fit and enjoy life, but not go, you know, push yourself too far. You know, go ahead and have a drink, enjoy yourself, but don't be a wreck, don't be turned to alcohol or drugs or anything that like that. Um, I think that's what it's done for me personally. Yeah, big, massive. So, what what's happening in? The world of Mr. Aston now. Do you know what I mean? Sort of lockdown, hopefully, fingers crossed. You know, yeah. it's looking like there's light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean? What, what's going on? In? Yeah. Well, with the work that I do at the minute, it, nothing's changed. Nothing's yeah. changed for me. It's just going to work every day, doing the same job, coming home. Um, yeah. The only thing that's crap for us is can't go to a pub for a meal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you can't go out, watch a cinema, you go to the cinema, watch a film. Yeah. Um, that's it, really, because you, you go shopping, you go and buy your food, you come home, there's not nowhere really to go. Mm. Um, so you get used to going for the walk, going to the park with the kids and stuff mm. like that. But, yeah, but going to work, it doesn't change for me at all, really. So you go to work and come home, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The only thing has been crap, I'm not going to do any teaching, which I miss, really. I do really miss teaching. Yeah. Well, so where were you teaching? Do you have your own, your own club? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ec- so I've got... Ec- ec- um, well, me, well, Ray started off his own association. So the oh, British okay. Modern, yeah, British Modern Karate and Kickboxing Association. Yeah, man, plug that, man. Plug it, man. Yeah. Tell the people, <laughs> man, where you at, man. Plug it. Yeah, so um, BMKA, we all over Facebook, and to search for us, you'll come up, come up yeah. on Google and that. We've got clubs all over. So Ray teaching in Bilston Leisure Centre. I teach in Wenchford Leisure Centre. Um, well, yeah, one thing I would really like to get, though, is to get back into the fight game by training somebody to fight. I, that's what I would really like to do with that. Yeah. Um, that's what that's, that's, that's the one thing I miss. So I, I love teaching the kids. I've got my, my daughter into it. She's really good as well. You know what I mean? So it's a shame fighting. How, how, good <laughs> is it, how good is it when you when you, you, you teach your kids something and you see your kids have like, like absorbed it. some, it's, uh, yeah. I, show, I show my daughter some shit, man. It, it yeah. buzzes me. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> It's Love wicked, it. especially when, like, when she first took the yellow belt, um, and she was kept to do some sparring for a for, for a yellow belt, which is a third third belt. So she turns up, I get the pads on. She started crying. I was like, "What's the matter? 
and I, I don't want him to go spying on his parents and he's just really upset and whatever. And yeah. she like, sort of like, we did it a little bit, but got through it. It was like, you've got to spy the next day. Then. So we did some sparring training and stuff like that and built the confidence a little bit. And the next grade in for Andre, he just kicked the shit out of his game. <laughs> 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 it's like spinning round our skin. Yeah, <laughs> like in, in a good <laughs> way, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. combinations, couple of punches, full of eye kick, moving round. And, put it, and like, it, was, it was really, really like nice to be able to see that come through in the kid. Like from, you know, three months later, She's gone from being a fine, nervous wreck from sparring one person, and then on the next grading, just obliterates them. It's brilliant. Yeah. So that, I do enjoy that. And I look yeah. down to see the, the kids get up to the, you know, get up to the black belts and stuff yeah. like that. And, and it, that, I, that. I do enjoy that, but I, I really miss, like, being in that sort of fight game and being in that mm. sort of, arena do you know what I mean 100% seeing you being a successful coach mate do you know what I mean you got the temperament yeah you got the temperament for it and the the you know what I mean like the the knowledge of passing on information to people really well do you know what I mean that's my experience it's you know there's a there's a lot of gyms out there and you're competing with them but I, you know what I mean? I want one person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want a gym for. No, I'm not a greedy person. McDonald's. I want to do it for the love of the sport, not for yeah. making money from it. That's yeah. why I do it. I've, not, I've never done it for making money. I, I don't do it. That's my hobby at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and for us, want to, you know, still stay. I can't do the fighting myself now because I'm too old. Um, but I can still train somebody else and get them mm. good at doing it as well. Mm. Then you still keep me your hand in. Do, do you see. So you're talking, how you're talking now, you sound like old school to me, as in, you know, that old sort of traditional way of martial arts where it's kind of passed down, like yeah. the lineage of it, you know what I mean? Like, it should be. You know yeah, what I mean? It's what it should you be, because, like, where did it with me? Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So, like, his coach was, like, Howard Brown and Dev Barrett. They passed it down to him. He passed it down to me. And I, I think that's how it should be. I think mm. that's a, a, a good, like, you know, Keeping the history of our martial arts in past one, I think. That's it, man. I mean, rather than like a massive club of loads of fighters and some being okay, some just, you know, having a couple of being really good at it. Mm, mm. Yeah. No, that, that, it, it is, man. Do you know what I mean? And it's all about respect as well, isn't it? I, lo- yeah, I love it that. Is. Yeah. Proper, proper, proper. So, what you need to do to me now, right? You need yeah. to send me the contact details for your clubs, you and Ray's yes. club, and okay. I'll make sure it's in the description. In the in yeah. this video, when I put when I pop it up on YouTube, man, yeah. do you know what I mean? Oh, mate, nice one. Anything else you want to say to the people, then, man? Because this has been wicked. Well, if there's anybody who sat here for two hours and eleven minutes and fifty-two seconds <laughs> watching it, <laughs> thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed doing it myself. Yeah, nice man. to reminisce about some memories and stuff like that. And, and again, speak to you, Trevor. We've been friends for years. Yeah, man. And um, nice to get together. You know. Know, again soon and have a laugh yeah man I, I hope so too mate <laughs> yeah like, like i said man um, this gentleman here man I, I hold in high regard mate do you know what i mean he's a quality <laughs> class bloke you know what i mean in and out the ring not when we talk about ring there's a class bloke full stop you know what i mean and like serious fighter do you know what i mean he's one of those dudes that you can't make him stop you know, he'll always come for you. Do you know what I mean? You can kick him as hard as you want. He'll go, all right then. Do you know what I mean? And I, and I love that. I love that. Do you know what I mean? He's not having it. You know what I mean? He's one of those, you know, you know those, you know those, fuck it, let's go. You know, yeah. that, you know those mentalities. That's those are the ones I like, man. You know what I mean? Big respect to you, bro. Big respect. Big, big respect, man. Do you nice know what I mean? Man. So, yes, bro. Salute, sir. Yeah, take care, Every mate. Single time, man. Every single See time. See you soon. Yes, people, again, that was my man, Brian Aston. Um, many thanks once again for passing through, Brian. Always a pleasure chatting to you, mate. And do you know what I mean? Just sort of connect with you and finding out about your journey coming through like the, the martial arts and just life, man. Do you know what I mean? Some great music and some great insight into where, how you're wired, bro. Um, I think, again, my take home from this would be kind of similar to... Um, what other guys have spoken about where sort of Brian got to the top of his game in full contact karate and kickboxing almost by accident 
And it's kind of a case of not overthinking what you're doing and just do things that you enjoy. He enjoyed it. He, he kind of got that um, steering force from his dad, whereby things could have easily gone a different direction, starting getting into trouble and doing nonsense. And his story could be something completely different. But having that influence from a different person made him focus and channel his energies into something positive. And without really thinking about it, you know what I mean? Just putting one step, one foot in front of the other, ended up being a world champion fighter, which ain't bad. You know what I mean? So if there's something, my take on from this is if there's something that you love and something you care about and something you enjoy, just keep doing it, keep doing it, man. You know what I mean? Because you never know where it's going to take you. So yeah, a lot of fun chatting to Bri. Yo, big respect, sir. As I box the mic, how unprofessional. <laughs> so again, if you like these interviews, share them man. if you think you know someone else who would like to listen to these kind of things share the thing um don't forget to hit subscribe hit like so that the algorithms know what's going on know that something's going on and it's something that people enjoy so please comment subscribe hit like um leave a voicemail on anchor share it on spotify all that good stuff and i'll continue to put out good stuff for you to listen to so again Love, peace, take care of yourself. I'm Tech, North Love, representing Buddha Palm TV. Peace. Peace.